Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, March 9th. It's a little past 7.15 p.m. and I do call this meeting to order. Um, first, I'd like to remind everyone that we are being filmed by ACMI, so please smile widely when at the uh, microphone. And second, um, I would uh, like to wish the best of luck to both the Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic uh, varsity boys hockey teams who are facing off tonight in the Division I North Finals. Um, the winner will go on to play the uh, winner of the Division I South um, game. And um, you know both teams have uh, made this town proud and we look forward to supporting whoever wins um, come next week at the Garden. So thank you very much. But Mr. Chairman, sir, if you had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't get into that, Let right? <laughs> as a proud graduate of Arlington Catholic, myself, do you have a preference as to who you'd like to see win this game, sir? Uh, you know, I'm in a tough spot because <laughs> both, um, uh, quite a few family members of mine have gone to Arlington Catholic, but I have a younger cousin on the Arlington High team right now. Oh. So I want, you know, a tie perhaps, but <laughs> I want everyone, uh, I want, it, I'm sure it will be a very competitive game and um, I'll be pleased with whoever wins. And we're very proud that Arlington will be the winner tonight. Exactly. <laughs> Indeed. Um, Thank you, sir. Of course. Um, with that said, we'll uh, get right into the consent agenda. agenda. Uh, we have the uh, minutes of meetings from February 23rd, 2015. We have the appointment of new election workers, uh, Gwendolyn Phelps and Marie Buckley. We have reappointments to the Public Memorial Committee Alexander Celepante, Eugene O'Neill, Wilfred St. Martin, and Dennis Corbett. And we have a request for a one-day all-alcohol license for March 21st, 2015 at the Dearborn Academy for the Leslie Ellis School annual event to support financial assistance. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is anyone in the audience here to speak on any of these agenda items? Seeing none, further discussion from the board, go. Uh, I just note one item that the, um, in their letter to us, the uh, Public Memorials Committee did uh, note that they do have one additional vacancy to fill. So I wonder if we can arrange to, to uh, advertise that and fill it. Maybe somebody here is interested in applying or somebody who's watching at home, but uh, it's a very important committee and it's been uh, very active actually the last couple of years. So. Thank you. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have appointments to uh, first to the Council on Aging, Marjorie Vanderhoof. Hey, Marjorie, please come up. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Can you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to serve on the committee? Um, well, I'm at, of the age that I need to know what um, services are available and what Arlington is offering our seniors. So, yes, that's my main reason. Excellent. Thank you. Do, um, we have questions from the board. Stan. D move approval. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. second. Further discussion from the board. Oh, just thank you very much. It's it's a very important uh, yes, important it is. role, and uh, yes, it is. I know I know the council has been very active as of late, trying to document mm -hmm. really the uh, panoply of services and kind yes. of the service need as our senior population grows. So thank you very much for thank stepping you. up on that. Okay, my pleasure. Are you gentlemen all set or? Really well, just I, I just what persuaded me most was the line in your letter, as a younger senior. <laughs> <laughs> so. I keep claiming that anyway. <laughs> 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 as long as I can. <laughs> as a younger selectman, I support you. Oh, all. thank you. <laughs> you. You can borrow the term anytime you want. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Moving on, we have an appointment to the Parking Implementation uh, and Governance Committee. Michael Gordon, please come up. Um, so I will say a, a few words. Um, Adam and my, or the office, Adam and myself received um, several resumes for this position and um, I do think Michael speaks for itself. Um, really uh, impressive background in what this um, group will be doing and um, Always good to get a, a you know young face involved and someone who um, you know 
maybe hasn't partaken in community activities in the past. So um, we're very happy to have that, and I am very happy to recommend uh, Michael for this position. So um, you want to please tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, I'm a student right now interested in public transportation issues, and I was looking through the Nelson Maggard study and was interested in sort of how that can be implemented and looking forward to being a part of that. Uh, I moved to Arlington back in August, and so looking forward to getting more involved with the community. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, questions from the board? Dan. Uh, more just a comment. Uh, so I was an undergraduate at MIT in 1991 okay. when the Undergraduate Association created the Safe Ride. Yes. And I was, so I was reading the <laughs> resume and re-envisioned MIT's Safe Ride shuttle network. That's right. You're saying 23 years later, it, it wasn't perfect? Not quite. Hopefully now it is. <laughs> no. um, yeah, so it was, it, it's been a great service, and hopefully now it serves the MIT community a little bit better. Cool. Thank you very much for volunteering. <laughs> Move Thank approval. You. Thank you. Second. So motion and second, Joe. Um, yeah, I was actually just needling at the beginning of the meeting. I was me needling Mr. Dunn about how MIT seems to run the whole town. And, uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna be happy to approve you and, and then continue the trend. Um, and thank you, your resume is very impressive. I, I think, um, you know, I meet regularly with the, the, the merchants groups in the center and this is their number one concern is, is fixing this, this uh, parking. And I, th I think this is probably one of the most important um, economic development steps that we're, we're gonna take. So thank you for thank contributing you. your expertise and uh, we look forward to the results of, of what the committee brings forward. Uh, thank you, Michael, very much for your willingness to serve. Do you consider yourself a junior senior or a senior? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with the junior senior. <laughs> thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Um, but before we take a vote, I would like to note that um, I was, believe it or not, I was going through some old meetings and I came across the April 7th meeting of last year. And so just about a year ago, and that's when we got the presentation um, from the parking group. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's about time that we uh, get these, uh, start implementing these uh, changes that they recommended. So I'm happy to, um, happy to recommend Michael and make a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 As opposed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Moving on, licenses <coughs> and permits. We have a request for a common victualler in wine and malt license from Zoo's Garden, 166 Mass Ave. Hello. Hi. Can you uh, please tell us a uh, little bit about yourself and um, your business? Um, my name is Lucy. Uh, this business will be my brother, um, and I will be the manager of the business. And it will be the health restaurant, basically like a vegan, um, vegan healthy restaurant. So Asian style food. <laughs> All right. Um, questions from the board. So no spare ribs on the menu. <laughs> no. <laughs> Big. <laughs> but we have we have spare ribs like say ten spare ribs, which is like weeks. <laughs> you were enjoying it. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> I thank you for choosing Arlington and wish you the best of luck. Move approval subject to conditions as set forth. Second. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you very much for coming into town. I'm really looking forward to it. I live up in that part of town, and that's walking distance. And so I enjoy, I, I'm sure I'm going to be stopping in to, to enjoy your restaurant. Oh, um, thank you. I do just have, I, there's one uh, element of this that uh, I want to talk to you about a little bit, which is included in this is you're applying for the uh, alcohol license as yes. well. So uh, two years oh. ago, we had a problem where we had a series of restaurants who failed our alcohol inspections. Uh -huh. They were serving underage people. Oh. And the most common thing, that the theme that we saw with almost all of the people who did it was that they had, everyone who'd started the restaurant mm -hmm. knew the rules, but then the new people that they'd hired six months or a year or two years later didn't know the rules. And those were the people who'd made the mistake. Oh. So my question is, is, have you thought about that and do you have a plan for a training course for yeah, your we, employees? Yeah, we request for the trainings and all the people who serve the alcohol has to be uh, TIP certified. So me, I have my uh, um, bartender license and uh, all the TIP certified license too. Okay. So That's we will make sure um, non-licensing non will be happened. Good. 
I, I'm definitely, I, it isn't that I'm worried that you're going to make a mistake. I'm worried that in two years somebody oh. new will. So yeah, yeah, just I know. If we you will make sure to training all the new people. Okay. Yeah, all right. the staff. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just piggybacking on what Mr. Dunn said, I mean, as coincidence would have it, I mean, it's actually the location where you're opening where one of the, the problems oh, did, really? did arise. So, okay. um, but, so thank you for, for your attention um, to that. And I also appreciate that you're, you're going in there and filling this space. I, I think your predecessor was just there, so I, I appreciate not seeing a vacant storefront sitting oh. there for long. So thank you for uh, all of your investment. Uh, thank you. I know it's significant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. Um, we have a motion and a second. And I will just say it's nice to have new options in town, too. There, I, don't I can't think of any restaurants that uh, seem to be offering what you're offering. So it's always good to have a little bit of variety. Um, okay. And I wish you all, uh, all the success that you can have. Um, Thank you. So with the motion a second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on, a discussion and adoption of the draft selectman's handbook, parking policies and regulations. Mr. Grayley. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Continuing along, this is um, our attempt to pull together all of our parking regulations and policies. And so I move approval for the inclusion in our handbook. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second for discussion, but I do have some comments. Yep. Great question. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm all set. oh, that's it. Oh. That, there we go. Okay. Then Joe, come. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I was just I was just looking for the, just historically. I, I noticed that um, we do have. Uh, a, oh gosh, this is so hard. We do have a provision here on overnight parking that if somebody's denied, they they have to actually wait until the next year. And I'm just curious what the history was on on that with that waiting, the waiting period. Um, can you, um, do, we, do we? I don't remember. I'm sorry, it's page four. I'm having a hard time flipping back and forth. It's page four, it's section one, overnight parking. Um, oh, I actually had two comments on that. Um, the first is that it, it says um, that the Arlington Police Department um, and the Board of Selectmen issue these, but it actually, it looks like it's actually the Arlington Police Department or the Board of Selectmen issue them, depending on what the situation is, whether it's a nighttime or not. So it seems like a, a small okay. clarifying change just to make sure there's no confusion. Somebody might read this and think that they have to go to both of us. So it, we're oh, the, I'm sorry. sorry there, there is a difference. Uh, the police provide a waiver. Correct. The selectmen provide the permit. And it is small, and maybe it should be bolded or, or something, but it, we're trying to get universal language so that Exactly, and, and I think it's clear when you read further, it's just in here at, at one, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time flipping back and forth. I should have just printed this. It says overnight parking. Uh, yeah, if you look at the end of the first paragraph, it says no vehicles shall be allowed to park on any public street, et cetera, et cetera, unless such parking is for good causes determined authorized by the Arlington Police Department and to the Board of Selectmen. I could see someone reading that and believing that they have to go to both places unless they read further down. I, oh, yeah. I, I just, it seems that so you want or, the and to be an or okay. as, you know, as the situation warrants. Okay. And I think we describe it well here. Um, let me just find my, <coughs> good grief. I honestly, I took a lot of notes, but I just, uh, I'm having a hard time navigating here. Joe, would you like the hard copy? I could give you this one. Is it easy? It's my, it's my comments. Oh, okay. It's my comments. Um, I'll defer to other board members' comments while I like, okay. try to dig Dan? this up. Um, I just have, I've got a couple that I think are not too controversial. Uh, oh, wow. Do you know what, Joe? I just, I hit you your, did the same I thing, just hit your you? navigation problem, too. That was pretty awesome. You know what it is? It replaced the screen. It did. Hmm. All right. One looks moment. Like, looks like we have to have a discussion on Novus. <laughs> I, in, uh, I was doing pretty good until uh, in the was, coming days. That was an interesting. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, bearing with us. Um, I know since we've implemented Novus, um, we have had some technical difficulties, and there is a bit of a learning curve um, with it. So okay. um, I hope that we're not losing viewership <laughs> due to these pauses. Yeah, that'd be awful. So I do have two quick ones. If I think my colleagues are all right. 
Please. Please. That sounds good to me. <laughs> this is right up front. Um, selectman's duties and responsibilities and other parking personnel. Bottom of the second paragraph. At present, the parking clerk receives a stipend for him or herself and any necessary assistant clerk staffing. While the treasurer maintains independence in all of his or her duties in such position, uh, it, 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 uh, it must be noted that as parking clerk, he or she reports to the Board of Selectmen. Um, I just would like to st strike the treasurer because it isn't always the treasurer. It's just the, uh, the parking, it, it must be, uh, just uh, take out while the treasurer maintains independence in, in all of his or her yeah. duties in such a position. Uh, remove that, just it should be noted that as parking clerk reports directly to the Board of Selectmen, that's all. Uh, Makes sense. I don't really think it should necessarily, uh, you know, say treasurer, yeah, that's all. Future decisions. It, it's parking clerk uh, reports. Are my others on page 11? Oh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. I just want to make sure that I, I, I get these changes correctly. Do you want to strike all references to the treasurer? For example, it says tradition in Arlington is that the town Treasurer is appointed as parking clerk on a term concurrent with the treasurer position. Is that tree main? Yes. Okay. It's just a, uh, after at present the parking clerk. It's just basically striking the while the treasurer maintains independence piece. Well, um, I, I almost would prefer the tradition in Arlington is that the town treasurer is appointed as parking clerk on a term concurrent with the treasurer position. I'd almost rather that sentence be taken out and dropped and almost put in parentheses because we do have another section where we talked about the tradition of the appointment of the chairman of our board. Um, so I don't mind having that in there, but again, I just don't want it to be seen as, and, and I don't see recommending a change or it changing. I just want to separate the parking clerk is a separate position that reports directly to the Board of Selectmen. And in all matters related to parking, we are the, the commissioners. So I, I just want to remove any confusion on that. And then my other last one, I promise, uh, is on page 11. Actually, sorry, Mr. Greeley, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah. So I'm, uh, I just, are you intending in, your, in the new language to include mention here somewhere that the treasurer is traditionally the parking clerk or, or not? Not. Okay. The, I mean, that says it right there. Tradition has been that it's the treasurer. Oh, so you want to put, you want to keep that part I want to keep it. I just want to take that sentence out of that paragraph and put it below that paragraph. Okay, sorry, a, sorry. So the tradition has been that the treasurer is the parking clerk. Yep. I have no okay. problem with that. Okay. But I want it to be clear it isn't, it isn't concurrent with the job of treasurer that you are the parking clerk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I made that more confusing. All right, uh, on page 11, penalties, towing tickets, et cetera. Um, and Adam in particular, if I may, through you, Mr. Chairman. It does only say obstructing private way. So, so but the, the following <clears throat> violation is failing to leave an unobstructed 10-foot lane of traffic, which would be for any way. That would be obstructing a public or private way. So, um, a couple weeks ago, I went down the street and an oil truck was filling oil and was taking up the whole road. That would apply to that? I mean, because of snow banks, obviously. Yeah, they'd be, they would be failing to leave an unobstructed 10 foot. All right. Well, then the only other thing is uh, I don't think, I think obstructing a, a pub public way should be more of a penalty than $25. Um, you think it should be more? Yeah, I think you know if we obstruct, if we park in a bus stop, it's a hundred dollars. If uh, at a hydrant, it's a hundred dollars. I think a car that obstructs a public way or a truck, um, I think it should be more of a penalty. But what do my colleagues think? So uh, I guess in the example that you gave with the oil truck and the snowbank, um, that you know I, I don't think that that the person. Um, in that oil truck deserves a greater ticket because you know I think the resident needs oil and oh, you know but he could have parked closer to a bank or and the driveway was open oh I was under the I impression mean, that there was, there was nowhere oh, okay huh. I guess that would change it well I, I don't want to point out that oil truck in particular I'm just saying though but mm -hmm. um, 
I guess I yes, think if yes. it was if it's a particularly egregious blocking of the public way, I would suspect that what's going to happen is a tow truck, and that's going to be additional monetary action. But if it's you know somebody who's on one of our more narrow streets who's making it such that it's harder than it should be, but hasn't actually created a safety issue because you know the fire truck can get down there by going over. Um, I, I, I'm inclined to leave it, but I'm, I don't feel particularly strongly about it. The manager oh, Adam? Yeah, so, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I was under the impression, and I, I may be mistaken, that the board's staff was doing some research of surrounding communities for what similar violation amounts would be, and then once that research was done, maybe then a more thorough advice could be given to the board on whether or not the amount should be changed. I so can. There, yes. Um, these are actually the things that are on a ticket that the police use. So, uh, I mean, uh, we could definitely look uh, into right. and change, yeah. you know. I, excuse me. I just yes. I wonder, as we're talking about this, on how many streets last week after the last big storm could a, could a person actually park, and although we've had parking bans, but 10 foot of unobstructed, that's, that's a pretty good size. Uh, I mean, that's really the primary reason why we've had the parking ban. Yeah. And it's been impossible to do so. Okay, Joe. let's wait for the research then, I'm yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm actually, I was actually curious on this section, how we reconcile, well, I, I think there might be a uh, typo on the, the fourth um, violation. It says wheels over 12 feet from curb, but I think that means over 12 inches from curb. <laughs> Having gotten a ticket for that in December, I know that it means 12 inches. <laughs> I do not Which I paid promptly, by the way. I do not accept that, that amendment. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in history tonight, please. So I am, I'm trying to um, understand what the difference is between, I mean, it seems like you could actually be violating both of those at the same time, could you not? Both what? Obstructing a public way and having your wheels 12 inches mm -hmm. away. Yeah, sure, I guess yeah. you could. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how that practically plays out. That might be something to ask, though, in the research, how they reconcile those. Is that is that a single violation? Or is check that both boxes, probably. Yeah, do they check I think both? that's exactly what they do. Is it? Is it really? <coughs> they check them. They check both boxes. Okay. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, <coughs> may I add but let's that? get back to, so you yourself did park more than 12 feet from the <laughs> Twelve <laughs> inches. <laughs> inches, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Judge, you had um, you started with your changes, so. Um, yeah, actually, I think I just have one, one administrative, one other administrative change, and then I had um, just a, a question about just the, the reasoning, not really recommended change. Um, on page seven, under daytime parking, I, I think it says two hour. I think that should be plural. Okay. Two hours. Um, <clears throat> I, I just had a question. Um, we have a provision under overnight parking um, that if there is a denial of an overnight parking request that somebody has to wait for a calendar year. I'm not necessarily proposing a change. I'm just wondering um, if there's history there that, that led to that, that provision. Is it to pre prevent the um, police department and our office from getting hammered with the same request from the same address over and over when a, a situation may not have been remediated during that time? or? Sure. Um, I think it's for that permit, though, similar to to what was given on Swan Street and things like that. The overnight right in front of. So I don't know the that, that if they're denied, we just yeah we won't review it for another year. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. Otherwise, know. great. Thank you for the work on it. Thank you for the work. The way I would read that is I think that's um, talking about the fact there's only eight a year. Mm -hmm. And that once you get your denial because you've gone over eight, then you can't oh. start till the next count. Gotcha. I, I think that's what that is. Gotcha. Okay. okay. That, that makes sense. Too. Thank you. Okay. Dan. Uh, I've got two. Um, page four. Mm -hmm. Under waivers. Yes. We say number one, expecting an overnight guest. Number two, disabled vehicle. And then number three, it says, I got confused. For a driveway out of service because it is occupied by a pot or dumpster or other building related circumstance you need to contact the inspectional services office at. And so is th that to say that we need, if you block your own driveway with a dumpster, which you know I totally understand, you know, you're doing some demo work or whatever, you can't get a parking waiver without talking to inspectional services? Is that what that's trying to say? 
My Usually, uh, the process is um, you need a pod um, or a dumpster permit. With that, they give you the ability to park on the street because it's safer to have the vehicle on the street versus the container. So they take care of it in one, and that's for private or public streets, even private streets. If you live on one, you need a dumpster permit. Then I would say that that language probably needs a, because I, I don't know about you all, but I, did, I definitely did not successfully extract that. <coughs> um, so do you think just adding something about um, you need to contact inspectional services for a permit would that do it for you? I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm it's well, a dumpster I, permit. I wonder though, whether right? we just make it number. Uh, so expecting an overnight. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Greeley. Uh, expecting an overnight guest, disabled motor vehicle, driveway number three, driveway out of service. Then under that, it should be noted if uh, one has a pod or a dumpster in their driveway uh, that they need to contact inspectional mm -hmm. services. In order to get the right, yeah, because you know, your people are repaving their driveways, yep. that's a legitimate reason, it's out of use. Uh, totally, um, I, I think your solution solves my concern, Mr. Really. Okay, and, uh, Doug, you are right on that. You get, yeah, yeah. I think we've got yeah. it. Thank you, yes. So, I just have uh, one more, and it's much more general. So, I'm obviously happy with the document, just a couple things here and there. There's no, if I, one of the ways I envision this document being used is it's going to be online and people who want to learn about these things, it's not just for future selectmen, mm -hmm. it's also for the public. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I was thinking about is that when we often get um, requests that we then deny because they don't meet any of the hardship criteria. We didn't really talk about what our hardship criteria are or give any examples or, you know, attempt to do any education. And so I personally, like as is, I am happy to approve this document. The document's good. Yeah. But, but I think it could be improved with some more, with language about the measuring stick that we use. And I think that that will lead to, you know, I, I think if, if I were to, you know, I think I put myself in the shoes of some of the people who've come before us and I read this document, I'd show up, I'd fill out the f form, I'd come in and then I'd get shot down and it wouldn't be the most pleasant experience. So. Are you looking at the bottom of page five? I. <coughs> it outlines, but maybe not to the degree you would like, overnight on street parking permit by the Board of Selectmen for the following circumstances engineering impossibilities. Yeah, I think we you should say more than this. I think so, think? yeah. I think even a couple examples might go a long way. So, so for example, on Eastern Ave. Yes, I mean, but I think I we can talk about it. Not Eastern, Highland Ave. <coughs> we can talk about them as hypotheticals. You know, we can say this is one that we approved and this is one that we denied and, you know, give people, I, I think we'd have a, you know, more people would learn before they got here about what their chances are. I think that's probably a worthwhile endeavor. I, that, Doug, you were putting this together for me either, I agree. So I think um, we can add that. I think so. Uh, I think maybe the most functional way to do it would be, um, unless everyone's prepared to have that discussion about what exactly they'd like in there tonight, uh, would be to send uh, Marianne and I some examples of things that you think are clearly out of bounds that have been, you know, things that have recurred at least in your memory. And Marianne and I can look through our sort of files to see if we can find some clear examples as well. But just so that we're used, so that we're developing a couple of examples, ones that you guys have in mind, and maybe we can find some that, that maybe aren't necessarily ones that are coming to the boards on right now, and we can list a few examples of ones that are granted and denied. Sure, we can do that. So I think um, perhaps, I still think that tonight we should, I mean, at the will of the board, take a vote on this, and then we'll come back and add, um, you know, an addendum to it at uh, further. Yep. For time. But that, yes, and that's how, that's how it goes, if I may, sir. Uh, uh, after this, uh, Doug's going to take it, and he, he, he types up a final version of it. Uh, and then we, we have yet to do the one page yes. on this, because remember we want the one page in the handbook, mm -hmm. and the more detail of this would come later in the handbook. 
No. Uh, so those two things have to be done in the balance. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Greeley, if I could just uh, uh, build off that point. I, as the board recalls, the process is, is that we're developing the handbook. Um, we are approving it so that we've got something that's a little bit more modern and concrete in areas either where there wasn't a written policy before or where there was, but we wanted to change it over a little bit. Um, once the whole handbook and all of these policies are completed, there will also be another opportunity, I believe is Mr. Greeley's uh, conception of this, for us to look, at, and Mr. Burns, to look at this as a whole document and make sure that we've gone through it comprehensively and that it all fits together well, too. So there will be a couple of different opportunities, but whether we do it um, at the next meeting or, or later on down the road, we can definitely include these examples. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, if I may, I have one more point to Dan. Of course. <clears throat> you know, we want this online. We want the public to understand. Mm -hmm. We want this for new selectmen. But also, uh, Marianne, who uh, helps us greatly put this all together, has pointed out how much help it is, will be for that office Good. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of them having a, a nice, clear, here's all the policies, procedures, licensing, et cetera, uh, of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Further discussion, um, further changes. So I am, I am, uh, as Mr. Greeley said, I um, play a minor role in trying to come up with some ideas for this. Um, but I, one thing that um, sticks out to me um, in this document is the amount of waivers that we give out. Um, it's, you know, temporary, um, maximum of eight per calendar year and um, you know I guess that for the right reasons I don't if, if there are legitimate reasons that why people you know re really need this I um I don't know if eight if I don't know if eight's enough or I don't know you know I guess I want to find a way to increase it but not increase you know but not allow for abuse of it um, you know, say I, I'm thinking, you know, four days. What if someone, say, grandparents want to come down for four days at Thanksgiving, four days at Christmas, and, you know, they, what about birthdays, you know, moving forward from that? Um, so I, I'm thinking perhaps um, increasing that to 14 days. Um, I, I think that just gives a little more leeway to, um, for individuals to, you know, not feel so handcuffed by eight days, which I, I don't think is quite, you know, too much time. So, um, any discussion, I'm happy to take. Yeah, Dan? I'm curious uh, what the town manager and, uh, and the police think about the current, like, costs of enforcing this and whether, what that change would be or not be. <clears throat> Frankly, I'd, I'd have to talk with the police to see what they would think. I. I, I don't know specifically, you know, how much more of an, uh, you know, an uptick in their work it would be if we went from eight to fourteen. But I think it's a fair consideration. Um, and I'm also I'm happy to wait, say how we're looking into the other issue, um, wait to add it in at that point too, until we can get some further information. But I, um, <clears throat> I just think it's a way to kind of help out some residents and alleviate some concern. Joe. Yeah, I think it would be helpful, well, not just to, to get a cost picture, but just some other metrics, you know, how many are being issued, mm -hmm. how, many, how many of those households are hit, hitting the limit. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's really the key. I mean, how many are hitting the limit now and maybe running into um, denials? And, so, uh, it, I, I will say that uh, this, uh, what made me think of it, is that I, was, I did get a call saying um, you? that people were hitting their limits. Mm -hmm. So, um, but... Yes, I'm happy to um, I'm get some further information prior to. I'm sympathetic, though. Mm. We can work something out. Yeah, I can do that. Yes, Mr. Grail. Yeah, um, I agree with Stephen. Um, but we literally have more exceptions than the rule in the town anymore. I don't believe it's possible for police to enforce what exists today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have handicap, we have resident parking, we have one hour, two hour, 15 minute. Um, you know, there's one the, uh, down in the east uh, at the Gibbs. There's five different parking situations on that street alone. Um, so anyhow, but I, fav I, I agree with you. Uh, we want to welcome people into this town. But those of you who have served with me know I feel 
but the residents don't agree with me, so we put it on the ballot, and 21 precincts favor keeping overnight parking, <coughs> so we keep overnight parking. Uh, but the time has passed. I mean, it's just, the time has passed, but. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm the old guy, but. Uh, and so anyhow, though, I agree with Stephen. I, but I thought we talked, did we say 10? Did we said 14? I thought it was 14. Okay, but, um, all right. I think we wanted to go to. Um, but I agree with, so. So we didn't pre present that to Corey or Stephen Gilligan, the, f yes. the, the 14? Uh, oh, not that. I, yeah. I meant no, I know section. we presented this to both of them, yeah. Um, so for, no, yeah. but, uh, you know, I, I can tell you from just being in the office, the public certainly doesn't think eight is a good amount for them, whether, you know, whether it's for anniversaries, birthdays, or, you know, uh, you know just people coming over and staying, period, and on, so. Thank you. So, um, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll, um, we, so we will come back to this with a potential few more additions. Um, anyone in the audience want to discuss our selectmen's? Yes, come up to the microphone, please. Good evening, ma'am, gentlemen. My name is Phil Bates. I'm a resident of Cleveland Street. Um, one aspect of the denial on page five says if you are denied, you cannot make another request until the next calendar year. It seems a little harsh, especially if you haven't used up the temporary maximum. You know, if you haven't used any and your first attempt is denied, you're cooked for the year. So maybe address the language in that, um, you know, allow for a possibility of an appeal or a follow up with the police as to why you're denied, more importantly, uh, you should be able to use the uh, remaining number of uh, permits overnight. Uh, second, if I may, uh, living cool. on Cleveland Street, about four horse houses down from the Fox Library, it was pretty hellacious trying to get in and out of my driveway uh, with the big storms we had. I certainly understand, like everybody else, you know, driving and parking with uh, eight foot snow banks is certainly a challenge. Um, but the parking ban that was in effect, um, it was very challenging, I think, for the police to enforce it. Um, I regularly had to run out of my house, usually in slippers in a bathroom, waving at, uh, you know, people going to the library and say, hey, you know, you can't park, there's a ban. Also, you're blocking my driveway. Um, and again, the most common response I got was, I had no idea that there was a ban. So I'm not sure what the right mix is of, uh, of enforcement uh, or awareness. I know there was one sign on Mass Ave coming into East Arlington from Cambridge that said parking ban, no parking on the side streets, but I don't think everybody had awareness about it. So um, despite the police's uh, responsiveness and efforts to enforce, there was certainly a lot of hardship on my part as well as my neighbors uh, along the street. Um, to that end, well, if any of you had any hand in widening the end of the road after uh, 11 D calls from me to the police saying, please help us out, uh, I thank you kindly for that. Uh, and I also would like to say, uh, uh, Chairman Byrne, that the eight you know, allowances for overnight park, and I agree with you, that seems a little scant. Uh, I'm not sure what the right number is, but I certainly would uh, recommend increasing that because you know, you have a friend over and they have a few pops and they don't want to drive home. Hey, sorry guy, I've used all eight. Best of luck to you. <laughs> you know, I think we'd all like to avoid that, so. That's all I have to say. Thanks for hearing me out. Thank you very much. I, I will say, um, with the um, year, <coughs> so looking at it, it's because it, if you get a denial, it means that you're, you've reached your limit. So that's why it says don't wait till the next calendar year. It's not saying that, you know, we, think poorly of, you know, your request. It's okay. that you hit that eight. So that's why you have to wait till the next calendar year. Okay. So I think, um, you know, adding a few more days might help out with that. Certainly, of course. Only let your friends drink in January, in other words. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> <laughs> no, can I, yes, can I ask yes, you a question, sir, sure, please. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? So did you get the reverse 911 calls that uh, explained that there was an overnight parking ban. I did not, but to be not. fair, I'm one of the uh, disconnected generation. I, uh, I don't have a house phone, just a cell phone. Uh -huh. So that would. Uh, I've actually had people complain to me they got too many calls. Oh, really? Uh, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe it. I believe it. I, I, I've heard that. But, but I get mine on my cell phone too, as well as my house phone. 
So I wonder, yeah. with yourself, you. are you a renter? Do you not own your property? I do rent, yes. Okay, I wonder, is that I why? Also I get, but you can sign up. You have to sign up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, where do you sign up on? On the town's uh, website, uh, there's a button to subscribe to emails, calls, the whole suite of communication from the okay. town. Okay, thank you. No problem. So that might help. But your point is well taken, Absolutely. and it's why we established the system. Uh, Matt, how many calls do go out now, Adam, on a? We sent out 21 in the past month. How much? 21 calls in the past month. 21? Yeah. But to how many 19, phones? 19,000 phones. 19,000, yeah. yeah. So, anyhow. Yeah. We're, we're doing our best. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, County, for your efforts. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like you. My home, home explodes and beeps and rings and twitters and everything at the same time whenever one of these goes out. <coughs> and I, I think a lot of people don't realize uh, the ban is still on. It's not in the past tense. It's actually still in effect. And, and driving around town, I think mm -hmm. it, it, it. Let's check his house. What's your address? Did I say Cleveland? And the other thing, though, I, I did want to note, I mean, I, I think the gentleman, Mr. Bates, raises an interesting point. I, I think that in a situation like you outlined where somebody might be at a party may not be safe to 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 be to be driving we don't want them on the roads we have an, a public safety interest in not having them uh, on the roads and for their own safety however our policy says that they have to actually have the request in by oh, i'm sorry it's 10 p.m mm. the draw i thought it's at 10 a.m mm. oh, it seemed a little yeah. mm. all righty then <clears throat> that seems Yes, so, Dan. Uh, I guess we've had a couple people get hung up on that sentence on page five about the denial. And given that we've had a couple different readers who have, even if you, once you think about it a little bit, it makes more sense, it's probably, we can massage it a little and make it easier to read on the first read. Um, after you have received a denial, yep. it is because you've reached your limit? It's the type of thing that I think if we tried to write it right now, we'd probably yeah. fail. But if we could just ask Doug to, I bet he can. Good point. Thank Would you. you re like us to just strike it right out. Actually, that's on the website, the police website right now, and you know we'll work with them to to have it out too, because it seems like it is questionable. But what about it just being out, striking it? Cool. Um, so can I, can, because if if there are other sources that are going to direct folks to inspectional services in order to get a permit for a dumpster or a pod then that should take care of itself. I think it's part of what you're saying. No, right? I think we're talking, we're oh, talking geez, about the- I'm so sorry. sorry. It's I've different. got the wrong place in my notes. Sorry. We're, we're on this now. Yeah, the, I'm sorry, the denial. Mm. I think we can clean it up. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you could yeah. just clean it up, that might be helpful. Clean it up, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, further discussion on the handbook. Yeah. Can I, can I oh, this? can you come up to the microphone, please? It seems that the limit is the issue and not Denial, why not simply say, if you've reached the limit of your applications, you can't apply till next year. And is there an issue, it's confusing to me, is there, are there other reasons for denial other than? Uh, it's generally, I think, number? just that you've used too many under these circumstances. Okay. Thank you. I think that's wise. Yeah. Further discussion? Seeing none, further discussion from the board. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much, and we'll, um, we'll come back to this in the future. I would like to thank um, Mr. Bates for bringing a computer and being an interactive follower <laughs> of our meeting. That's um, not something that happens all the time. We're still checking your house, though. <laughs> 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 um, moving on, um, we have the town manager's evaluation. Um, first, I'd like to thank my colleagues for um, filling this out and getting it back to me. And um, m not more importantly, but perhaps in the circumstances, <coughs> I uh, really want to thank uh, Karen Malloy and Human Resources. Um, this is a, it's not an easy task uh, consolidating five um, different evaluations, and I think she does a tremendous job at it. And I, I know that it says that the chair and her work in conjunction, but um, uh, most of this falls on her shoulders, and I am um, very thankful for all of the work that she's done on this. Um, so that being said, um, I would just also like to note that I think our 
evaluations um, really across every, um, every category, Adam uh, scored remarkably well. And I think that um, really shows the fine work that he does and um, our, how well of a job that this board thinks he does. And it, um, it really goes a long way. And I think this is a worthwhile practice, um, one that you know, while um, we think that Adam does do a tremendous job, we do also offer ways to improve. And I think that is important to know too. So um, that being said, I'll allow um, any discussion from the board. Joe. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, um, to know, just for people who are, are watching might be wondering, we have a, a number of sections here that we, we, um, we do rate the manager um, on personal characteristics, professionalism, public relations, communication, board support and relations, community leadership, organizational leadership, personnel management, financial management, planning organization, overall score. And on no category did the manager get less than 4.31 and most of them were well up in the 4.7, 4.8, 4 4.9 um, range. And, and it's out of five, so that's And it is out of five, and we don't consult on these. These are all separately sent in. Um, I do, I agree, Ms. Malloy does a fabulous job of, of consolidating these into one, um, one, um, one list. And I would just say, Adam will kill me for saying this, but on, uh, last week on Thursday, he very apologetically sent out a note saying that he was deathly ill and he just could not come into work, but he'd be checking email at home, to which my immediate reply was, what's wrong, you couldn't make it to the phone booth? <laughs> <laughs> Get your cape. Um, and back to work the next day. And back to work the next day. So um, thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for all of the work oh, on, on this please. as well. So. Thank you. Um, further discussion from the board. Dan. Uh, first of all, I move adoption of this as our review of the town manager. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to say I'm very continue to be delighted with Adam's performance, and I think that that's reflected in both my individual comments and in the group comments. And I think that we as a town are really lucky to have him, and I hope we keep him around for a really long time. I'd also like to say that uh, I think that we as a board are doing. A, I'm I'm proud of us for sticking to this and continuing this process of doing these formal reviews and giving this feedback because I think that it's really important. Um, it's easy when someone is doing a good job, but it's even more important when they're not. And so we're, we're training ourselves for some future day when things aren't uh, working quite so well. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, um, Arlington, <coughs> since 1952, when the Town Manager Act came into uh, approval uh, by the voters, uh, we've had six town managers, and I've served with five of them. And the five I've served with, he's the finest. Excellent work. Thank you very much. And Marquis is on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us who knew Donald would be, I'm the dean of town managers in Massachusetts. And he was a great one as well. We've been very blessed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I would like to ask Adam maybe to kind of just explain a little bit about what this means to you, how you use it. In, um, you know, along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, to start, I have to thank all the board members. This is not a short, quick process. I know I provide a lot of information, and it's a pretty detailed document that you go through, so I really do appreciate that you all <clears throat> take the time to provide such thoughtful feedback. Um, you know, on, on the positive side, uh, you know, like any human, hearing positive feedback about the work that you're doing is very, uh, you know, motivating and inspiring, so it is nice to have that regular check-in. Um, and then just on, on the sort of, the, on the business side of it, um, having this process in place every year where tracking the goals that we set in the summer, <clears throat> being able to put on paper where we are in terms of meeting those goals, providing that to you, just, it provides me an invaluable sort of just mental check to make sure that we're continually hitting what we should be hitting and meeting our benchmarks. Um, and then any even remarks that are constructively, uh, or you know, remarks in terms of constructive criticism, I, since the first year we started this, I, I focus on them. I, I try to find a way to address those concerns. And they're, they're very important to me because we don't necessarily always have the ability to have a direct conversation about, you know, this is an issue I think you should be working on. And this provides that opportunity. So um, I, I think it's an incredible tool for us to use. I'm glad we've stuck with it uh, as well. And again, thank you to the board for taking the time to do it. Thank you very much. 
Is there discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, um, we have a motion to adopt. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Um, we're going to move uh, agenda item 10 to after um, the final votes and comments. Um, that's the discussion of future uh, board meetings. Um, so moving into warrant article hearings. Um, just a few notes before we get started. Um, you know, as I stated at our last meeting, um, for this year's hearing process, I'm going to ask that each presenter makes their presentation within 15 minutes at the 12 minute mark. Um, I will inform the speaker of the time and ask you to begin your concluding remarks. Um, following your presentation, we, um, the board will be able to ask questions and have a discussion. Um, at the conclusion of, that board's, of the board's discussion, um, any other member of the audience who would like to comment um, will have five minutes to make their remarks, which will be followed by a discussion as well. Um, so we're, um, we're just trying to have a little bit uh, more structured process. Um, so, and I appreciate your cooperation. I will note that as well. And, and that being said, um, we'll get right into this with um, Article 8, a bylaw amendment. Oh. You know what? I have. Seven. seven. Sorry, I'm looking at. Oh, yes, I was at the wrong one. Um, Article 7, Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Bylaw Amendment um, Regulation of Posted Event Notices. I believe Christian's here. Thank you. Sorry, I was looking at final votes and comments there, and I confused myself. So thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Christian Klein. I'm a resident of Arlington, town meeting member, Precinct 10. Um, I also want to mention that I'm a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals and a board member of the Friends of Robbins Farm Park, but I'm not speaking on behalf of either of those groups um, this evening. So the, the issue that came up is citizens and nonprofit groups have messages that are of public interest to the town. And the traditional way that people get these most messages out is they make a poster and they put it up on the local telephone pole. They make a flyer, they distribute the flyers around. And lo and behold, that's illegal. Um, it's a violation of the zoning bylaw, which none of us had really checked very carefully. And this came up uh, partially because there was a, uh, something that had come before the Zoning Board of Appeals looking for, from the Recreation Department, and they were hoping to establish a policy that would allow them to sort of filter all these messages that get put up on their property. And it turns out that there is no mechanism to allow that to happen. Um, and there are lots of groups in towns that have important messages that you know, we sort of feel should have a venue other than just being on the internet or the lucky chance that we can rent the sign in front of town hall or that we can create a fleet of banners to go somewhere down further on Mass Ave. Um, I noticed on my way in, the League of Women Voters have a nice little sign in, right next to the town sign. I'm not sure that meets the zoning bylaws. Um, so what should we do about this? So I had spoken um, with Joe Connolly from Recreation. Um, Friends of Robbins Farm Park is a group that uses signs to advertise their events. Um, I also spent um, several meetings with Mr. Heim trying to come up with a policy, try to understand exactly what the town bylaws are. Um, and so that's where the, the genesis of the proposal that I've made. So the, the main, the main fo focus of this is to sort of define what these notices are and how they differ from a sign and then move them out of the zoning bylaw into the general bylaws so that enforcement is not through the building department but is through the Board of Selectmen, through the police department where there's an enforcement mechanism already in place for signs. Uh, for some reason there's some duplication between the two but we'll sort of try to move it in that direction. Um, so last week I appeared before the Arlington Redevelopment Board to discuss the portions that would be involved in the zoning bylaws. Um, and the only, there were, I believe that that's been distributed as well. And so basically we created a definition for what a notice would be, that it's a temporary sign elect, select, erected by a person or a nonprofit organization for the purpose of advertising an individual yard sale, public event, or lost pet. And then when you go into the section on signs, it basically says, don't look here anymore, go look in the, in the general bylaws. And that's what brings me here this evening. Um, 
<coughs> excuse me. So the portion that would appear in the general bylaws states that a sign erected by a person, nonprofit organization for the purpose of advertising an individual yard sale, public event, or lost pet are hereby referred to as notices and are exempt from the provisions of this article of the town bylaws so long as they abide by the following provisions. And the, this section here, which is Article 1 uh, from Title 5, has to do with billboards and signs and its restrictions on use. And so the exemptions would be that a notice has to be constructed of a resilient material and must be erected in a way that is not dangerous to the general public. Uh, notices that are loose or damaged must be removed and replaced by the sponsoring person or organization. Um, then there are the next two sections. There is a change that the ARB had made that I believe came in the recommendation that's before you. Um, we had asked that uh, notices not be erected more than 14 days before a yard sale or event. It must be removed no more than two days after. Um, the recommendation from the ARB was to change the 14 days to seven. Um, our recommendation had been that notices cannot exceed 10 square feet in area. Notices must include the name of the sponsoring person or organization, the date of the yard sale or event, mm -hmm. and a contact phone number or email address. And it also noted that registered trademarks may not occupy more than 10% of the notice area. Um, the recommendation for the ARB was that the 10 square feet be reduced to six. Um, we also noted that they can't be placed on trees. Uh, they can't put them on the private property without the consent of the property owner. Um, notices cannot be placed on public property without written approval from the Board of Selectmen. So this would include um, sort of any areas in town that are under your jurisdiction. Uh, town departments may establish policies for the display of notices on public property under their jurisdiction. Notices erected under such policies do not require separate approval from the Board of Selectmen. The attempt there is to give the Recreation Department the leeway to police items um, and to come up with a policy that works for them. And then Section G, notices cannot be erected in a way that limits visibility at corners or along uh, public and private ways. So um, a couple of things that had come up that had been questions initially, um, the private property, the question comes, telephone poles. Can we put them on telephone poles? Um, and so I had corresponded with a couple of people, with um, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Curl, and I did get in touch with the Verizon and spoke with the joint use uh, gentleman in Boston, and I was shocked that they actually don't have an issue with posting of signs on their poles. Um, the, what I had brought up to them is my concerns, what I anticipated their concerns would be was one, the safety of their workers, and number two, the damage to the poles. Um, they assured me that if, if it was an issue for their workers, they would remove the signs. Um, and that, you know, so long as most of the signs are being put up either with staples or with screws and they're being pulled out, you know, it's not causing detriment if you're not, you know, coming in with, you know, nail guns and whatever trying to attach things. So that was their, that was his primary concern, uh, was that as long as the poles are not being damaged, they're okay with that. Um, and then on the, the, the two sections that the, that the redevelopment board uh, felt to change. Um, we feel kind of strongly that there's a the specific reasons for it. Um, the 14 days is really because a lot of the public events are going to involve parking. Um, when you have a, if you're having a public event at Robbins Farm, say it's July 4th, um, telling people a week ahead that there's going to be no parking within six blocks because everyone's coming to Robbins Farm, it it's better if the longer we can put that out. So we think that two weeks is a reasonable time period for that purpose. Um, and as far as the sign size, um, the six, six square feet sounds big, but when you're in a car, um, it's really not that large. And so we think that um, allowing a larger sign size helps us, um, would help groups like Robbins Farm to do that. It also, the original recommendation from um, Recreation Department was also looking for a larger sign size um, because they have a lot of sponsor groups that are doing the Relay for Life and things like that that are looking for a larger sign area. Um, and so that's the presentation we're putting forward tonight. Um, there was also touched on briefly just the, the issue of how this is gonna come up at town meeting because it is a change to both the general bylaws and to the zoning bylaw. Um, and the recommendation that I would like to see from the moderator is to have it as a single element. Um, because if it does come up as two different parts, it becomes kind of quirky if one section gets approved and the other section doesn't. So um, I'm going to try to impress upon him that, and hopefully it will occur in that fashion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 
I would like to say thank you for all your legwork on this. Um, it seems like you had you know, quite a few discussions with quite a few parties, and I think that will help, um, certainly helps the process go smoother. So thank you. Mr. Grayley. So uh, tell me what this means for, uh, for political lawn signs. Oh, Chris, uh, sorry, you have to oh. stand up. <clears throat> Um, this doesn't specifically address political law and science. Those are covered already under the zoning bylaw and they would not be affected. You're sure? I believe so. Okay. Um, Mr. Greeley, may I, I, I can also confirm that generally political law and science have been treated differently, both historically and legally, uh, by various town bodies and But I've been told they're illegal. That's why I'm, I would ask you to look into that and wonder whether, because, uh, my only issue is I'm concerned about, even though I had 300 signs out last time I ran, by the way, but we passed three overrides, we passed four debt exclusions, and could not have done that without lawn signs. So um, I think they should be included in this, or I, I didn't realize they were already covered. I, I was told they were not. So, but I don't, I'm no expert on this at all. I just broke the law 300 times the last time I ran, if I, if I did. So, uh, but I would strongly urge for longer than 14 days, or at least 14 days, not cutting back to seven, if indeed political signs come under this, but to, to uh, notify residents of elections at least a month in advance, I feel, uh, uh, and I mean for overrides, for debt exclusions, all the liquor questions, anything that there's campaigns for out there. So. I, I, anyhow, but I support this 100% and thank you for your work on it. Thank you very much. So, so um, just in response, if this, you know, I understand the need for, you know, or why candidates or why, you know, override questions, et cetera, would want to be out there for longer than seven days. But does a yard sale need to be out there for longer than seven days? You know, I think that there's, you know, different fashions. And I do think that, I, I, I didn't, I was unaware that the political lawn signs were, you know, were illegal before that. I didn't think they were. Um, so I, I would, I don't, I, I hope, I guess I wasn't, I didn't come into this, you know, when I read this, I wasn't thinking of the ramifications that they would have on that because I didn't think that they came under this. So. That's um, why I asked the question. Mm, yeah. um, okay, thanks. I just wanted to be clear on that. Um, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Klein. Uh, in full disclosure, I, did, I, I met with Mr. Klein and discussed this what, December, was it, Christian? I think or so. November or something like that. And he actually no, asked no. me to sign, sign his uh, petition to put it on the warrant. I thought it was an important discussion, so I, I did do so. But there's been a lot of legwork done um, since, since that time, and, and I appreciate it. I, I think the... the um, the intent here is really around public property, and we know that political law, political science can't go on public property any way you slice it. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like the council to to confirm that. I always understood that there was a free a uh, First Amendment issue too with political signs that kind of right. put them under another umbrella. Um, I think this is very important. I think this is kind of a continuation of some of the work that this board did uh, about two years ago. We adopted policies around uh, banners off of light poles. And we took some time and some discussion to, to um, try to codify this. I like the fact that this is put in here, that it, it actually creates a framework and on the one hand is permissive in making it possible for all of the many organizations that, that, um, that do run blood drives or the other friends of Robbins Farm Park or do so much good work in town to get their um, word out and at the same time enforces some kind of sign hygiene to make sure that we, we don't become cluttered. Um, and uh, to my mind, a, another real advantage to this is that we're not burdening the um, inspectional services with a, a policing function, which is really not something that, that, um, that, that, um, that is really within their 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 realm. I don't think it's something they like to do to have to go out and be be policing signs on the on the sidewalks. I think it is more appropriately brought um, uh, bef before this board. Um, so I like all of the safeguards you have in here. I did have some questions. Mm -hmm. you, you said that there had been changes with the redevelopment board, and I see a member of the redevelopment board and planning here, and I also 
some other folks who uh, had advocated for this around the size. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any examples of what the size are and, and are any of the organizations here, would they be impacted by the smaller size in the? Yeah, so Tony Farm Vogel, uh, the president of Friends of Robbins Farm Park is gonna address this, as dress sign size, he does have some samples to. Oh, that's what those are. Right? That's what those oh, are. okay. <laughs> those new artwork for the walls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, would it be appropriate to ask that, um, that those to be shown as part of answering yeah, the question? Well, maybe, um, I was thinking that perhaps we'd have to do the question and answer with, okay. Chris, um, with Christian first and then okay. move forward with just how the process is laid out. Okay. Well, thank you. I thank you for all of the groundwork on this. I, I think also in, in the area of uh, hygiene, because I think a number of us have gotten calls about sign clutter on poles and, and, um, and such requiring the contact information, really key, really key, um, so that there, there is a chain of responsibility there. So thank you for the ground. It seems like you've thought about just about all of the angles here. So. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, what do you see as the practical uh, impact of this change? Is it, do you expect that there's gonna be different behavior in what we see, or is it more making a lot of what we see conform to the law? Partial. Uh, for me, it sort of came from, there have been a couple of instances in, in town where there's the policy and there's what the rules are and then there's what everybody does. Yep. And I, f I feel strongly that if the, beha if the public behavior is working in a certain way, then there's something, either there's something wrong with the bylaw stating it the way it is and that maybe <clears throat> we should try to find a common ground. And so that was really the intent of where this came from. Um, it's not a. It's not an attempt to, you know, try to open it up and create sort of a free for all, but it's to sort of take try to take the best of what we have currently, which is that you can, you know, as you drive around town, you can find out what's going on and get a sense of what's going on. Is oh, the feast of the east. I totally forgot about that. That's coming up. Um, so you can do those kinds of things, but by the same token, it is stating, you know, you can't put a sign up for seven months advertising something. Um, you can't you know, put up a sign and then forget about it and it just sort of slowly molders away on the post. Um, or that you come across a sign, you have no idea who it's from or why it's there or, or something like that. So it's to try to address what I see as sort of the negative aspects of what we have at the moment um, where, you know, it's, it's very undefined as to what you do if you come across a sign. Uh, I certainly had no idea before looking into this that I was supposed to call the building department. Um, <clears throat> which makes it nice because you can't contact them during the weekend, so you can't have your signs taken down on the weekend. But it just uh, seems kind of a silly thing. So that, that was more the impetus of where it comes from, is to try to preserve the good aspects of what we have and try to limit what are possible negatives. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just had a couple initial comments. One is that, uh, first on uh, political signs, uh, I've, whether, I believe I had also heard at some point that political signs were against the rules, but I had considered them to be just a complete dead letter on First Amendment issues yeah. and uh, completely unenforceable. And, uh, right. and if, frankly, if, if the town ever tried to take down one of my signs, I would look forward to that battle. That would be a fun one. But uh, so, you know, so I, I, I mean, I certainly think that we'd be delighted if our bylaws complied with the First Amendment, but I have very strong opinions on what, what should be permitted uh, in terms of political speech. Um, my second thought is is that I definitely, like all of us, get do get complaints about uh, unsightly signs on telephone poles and um, the signal controllers and things like that. And uh, I'm sympathetic to them, but I also end up ranking them relatively low in my priority just because of, uh, you know, like, you know, who's going to, who, what, what town employees list is so short that the next thing on it is is cleaning up his telephone poles. And uh, so in some ways this change is, I like it because it puts it in an apart apartment that is probably better equipped, but at the same time, it doesn't, it's, I would be surprised if the, you know, the town manager and the police chief said, yes, that's gonna be something that's gonna be high on our enforcement list. One of the things I was thinking about even just now though, is I wonder if there, one of the ways to do this is to put the enforcement in the hands of <coughs> things like business districts. So for instance, if, in the Heights, you know, we've got a bunch of ugly stuff on those poles, we have a business organization there. What if we, you know, give them license to keep the poles clean? And uh, so I guess in, the, in, in that context, this is good because it gives guidelines for how that can happen. 
Um, I, I can think of at least one town meeting member who frequents our, our meetings who is never going to vote for this because he wants his polls clean at all times. So I'm, I look forward to it. I, I haven't really <coughs> settled on any particular direction. Those are my thoughts so far. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I have a couple thoughts and kind of one, um, I do like it being removed, removed from the zoning bylaw, and I think that this is, um, you know, an, an appropriate venue, um, our office. Um, when, in, when we do look at um, written approval from the Board of Selectmen, I think that it should probably be written approval from the Board Administrator. Um, I think that kind of doing this is an administrative task, and if we are looking at, um, Amen. you know, if it's for, you know, town groups and nonprofits, I, I'm comfortable with that being done strictly through our office. And, you know, I don't think that every person who wants to put a sign up needs to come before the board and um, being handled in that um, route. Um, two, I, I, did, I did put some thought into the enforcement of this. And um, if it is being done administratively through our office, I think one way that we might be able to actually stick to the um, you know, nine days that they're allowed to be out there is by, say, attaching a $20 refundable um, hmm. charge with this um, when you do come to our office. And after the nine days, um, if you have, in fact, taken the sign down, you can then have your $20 back. And I think that might be a nice way to, you know, help out to make sure that people are abiding by this law but also, um, you know, uh, penalizing those who don't. Um, so that's um, kind of what I'm, I'm thinking right now. Um, so that being said, uh, further discussion from the board. Yes, Mr. So Hill. did you talk to Marianne in our office about that? I didn't actually. Okay, no, I was just uh, curious. Yeah, yeah. sorry. You, no, you, you normally would. Yeah. May I ask through yeah, you, sir, please. any reaction to that, Marianne? Road trip. <laughs> you know, we'd have to check it, I guess, you know. Um, uh, it would definitely make some people very happy that come into the office that are upset with the polls and all. Um, it could just be, um, it could be difficult, uh, you know, at times to take care of that. I'd have to give it more thought. I hadn't thought about that mm -hmm. till tonight, but I understand, um, you know, the ability to penalize, I think, you, you know, for taking it down. Would keep it cleaner. But, so uh, you know, um, uh, I, I also wanted to ask: Does this cover sandwich boards? You know what I mean. Like sometimes on, on the parking right. island at well, the, Mass the, Ave and Pleasant Street, there's four or five right. So sandwich the, board ads. That section of property, I believe, is the towns, and so yeah, therefore yeah. it would be public property, and it would be under the board's jurisdiction. Okay. To, do, to either grant or not grant permission to use that public or okay. that public sometimes land. that that place gets messy with the oh absolutely thing, you know? yeah. I, uh, I did just I, I beg your pardon um, on the enforcement question the section of the bylaws that it would be going that this would be going into does already have an enforcement provision in it which allows for a fine of not more than a hundred dollars um, uh, or if a sign is left for more than 20 days by a f punishment of not more than $500. Uh, but just to Dan also on that point, this was years ago I was told there's no, it's actually considered illegal, but same thing, but it's a First Amendment right of free speech. So, but I would, I would be curious because if it's not covered, I, I think this would be a place to put, to, uh, put it in there. Thank you. Covered, sorry, yep, size and that kind of thing. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yeah, please. Um, I'd be happy to, to give the board a, a more detailed uh, review of that specific question, um, either in advance of the votes and comments or concurrent with the votes and comments on this particular issue. Uh, but it has been, it's my understanding that, that, that there hasn't been any, um, that for the most part, Arlington's had a fairly consistent position on the issue of political science and that we have not um, taken the position that uh, 
the zoning bylaws would forbid people from putting out political signs, although they're not specifically, and I, I apologize if, if I'm not getting this correct, I don't believe they're specifically addressed in the zoning bylaws anywhere by name. Um, and that may be the case in other communities, but I don't know that just because other communities have a zoning bylaw about political signs, that that actually changes the status of the law with respect to allowing people or not allowing people to putting out political signs to Mr. Dunn's point. Sir? Yeah. Yes. So I don't want to add to your work, Doug, but there are people who have certainly put political signs on telephone poles. Right. Uh, no question about that. So I just want to know where they're covered, but I don't want you to have to do a lot of work on them. If, if I can just add one or two more things, uh, from my perspective, um, the issue with respect to Verizon remains a little bit more complicated because they can represent that now, but they can always change their mind later because they're their polls. I mean, it's an important thing to know that this is the position that Verizon is taking right now, but Verizon could always change their mind because the point of the discussion around telephone polls or any you know, polls that are owned by Verizon, NSTAR, whoever, is that they're their polls and therefore, in theory, uh, people would need permission from them, not necessarily the town, to put something on their poll. What this bylaw uh, proposed amendment accomplishes, in my view, is it A, rewards people who want to follow the rules, and B, um, makes the current law that both the board and the ARB and other folks are operating under uh, more congruous with one another. Because right now there's definitely some, um, some, some conflict between what would appear to be in the, in the bylaws, and uh, the town bylaws and the zoning bylaws, and it's an important thing to rectify for its own sake uh, in addition to the benefits I think that Mr. Klein has talked about, Mr. Dunn has, has inquired about, and all of you have mentioned. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, just a couple of points. Uh, the, Mr. Grayley mentioned the, the sandwich boards. I'll say that in my early discussions with you know, Mr. Klein, I noted to him that I think we have <coughs> kind of a disconnect between what we have on the books and what's happening also with private sandwich boards outside of um, a lot of businesses, and a lot of them feel that it's vital to their, their advertising and, and, and such. It's not really enforceable right now what we have. I suggested maybe including that into here, but um, I think after discussing it, uh, we both agreed that that's biting off an awful lot, and it would be a good thing to see how the course of this discussion goes at town meeting and potentially consider that um, um, in the future, um, taking up the, the, um, the sandwich board question for private businesses, maybe whether certain something should be allowed by right um, in the future. Um, so that's one reason we didn't go that way. I was curious though, and I don't know whether to direct this to uh, council or Mr. Klein or to my board, to my fellow board members for your opinions. Um, since I've been on the board, I would say that we've had three uh, different things that we've considered um, that are kind of similar in, in this vein. And we've handled each of them a little bit differently. So, um, the first one I mentioned was the, um, the banner policy for the, for the light poles, um, which incidentally initially included sandwich boards in it. We, we actually struck that. We, we weren't able to reach agreement on that. We actually initiated that um, autonomously as a policy of, of, of this board, and I think Ms. Rice had, had assisted us with that, and we just did it. We initiated the policy. We, we just did it. It, it didn't require... Um, town meeting change. I understand with this we would need to make the zoning change to, to kind of make the, the switch. The second that was kind of similar was when we did street performance last year, which also did incidentally included some signage dimensions in, the, um, in, in, in what we, we adopted. But the way we did that was um, we adopted the uh, bylaw change with a, a basic skeleton but then um, the bylaw actually deferred to the board to adopt implementing regulations so that we had the flexibility if we found that something wasn't working, that this board would be able to, to um, change our regulations. What's proposed here tonight um, in, in the memo we have is that we actually adopt the whole thing in the bylaw, which means if, if ever we wanted to tweak the size or we wanted to tweak the durations or what, whatnot, we would have to go back to uh, town meeting on that, where there, there is a piece of this that really feels a lot like some of the types of policies we've been discussing in the handbook all of these, these, these months. 
So I'm wondering if there was any discussion about which way to go on that, whether it really is, um, you feel it really is necessary to enshrine all of these parameters directly within the general bylaws, or whether um, uh, just, just making reference to the Board of Selectmen and our uh, regulatory authority and our ability to adopt policies and regulations was considered whereby we could potentially adopt a policy that pretty much reflects what's, what, what's here, but we would have the flexibility if it didn't work. So that's kind of the question I have. I, I'd like to address that, but if Mr. Klein wants to first. Um, I, I didn't consider doing it that way. Um, partially, I think, from my perspective, it was more, um, I thought it was important to be very clear, especially on the, on the, on the floor of town meeting, yeah. I think, to say that, you know, this, we would like to make this change, and, but we're, we don't know what the new parameters are going to be, um, I thought was going to be a, would, would not fly at town meeting. So that was my, my reasoning for trying to be as explicit as I could in the, yeah. in the rules. Mr. Kiro, from my perspective, part of what we're talking about here is we're all talking about signs, but, but signs has a specific legal meaning in different contexts when we're talking about different things. So in the zoning bylaws, they've de defined signs of a, a certain way. Sure. What, what Mr. Klein's uh, amendment to the zoning bylaws and amendment to the town bylaws has done is defined notices as a very specific thing and defined a set of governing rules for notices. Yep. Um, whether or not that is, is, is properly includes everything that the Board of Selectmen has jurisdiction over um, is a kind of complicated question in the sense that, for example, I would think that sandwich board signs are kind of what this is directed towards. So that when someone uh, right now applies to have a sandwich board sign put out on town property, it's appropriate to come here because you're you know, the, the, the body that governs uh, public ways. Yep. And uh, the town bylaws kind of address billboards and things in a slightly different way, but it's still considered a type of signage. But that same sandwich board sign right now is probably disallowed by the zoning bylaws. And so what Mr. Klein has done here has developed a sub-definition of signage that is relatively specific but not so limiting that I think that it's unworkable. So could it include one type of banner that you might want to put out on a baseball field? Sure. Would it include the banners that go on the um, town um, <coughs> light poles? Light poles? Uh, I don't know that that would really be considered as the same type of signage either under the zoning bylaws or under um, this definition of notices because they're not temporary in quite the same way and they're not really uh, oriented in the same way that, that a sandwich board sign would be. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah, that's true. Uh, I want to take another crack at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that. I mean, I understand we have to explicitly change the zoning bylaw, and I understand that the, um, the general bylaws would have to contain the new definition of notices. My question is just about the specific provisions that are enumerated here, whether those whether it is feasible and appropriate for us to adopt those as regulation or policy of the board and have this general bylaw include the definition of what is regulated, but with reference to the board's authority to regulate and to make the decisions of how to regulate. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin? Versus it being a bylaw, is that your point, Joe? Why don't we? Well, there would be a by <coughs> there would be a bylaw, but just containing the definitions, but. Probably A through G wouldn't be here. There would be reference saying this regulation is subject to the authority of the Board of Selectmen, subject to policies adopted by the by the board. Presumably, then we would meet after the bylaw was was adopted. We would consider, um, you know, implementing regulations, which would probably look an awful lot or identical to what we have in front of us here. The difference being we would then have the ability if something wasn't work, working out to go back and, and to change it. And I think that what we did, for example, with street performance, because we did it that way, when we went into town meeting, I think that we, um, we put forward a model regulation, which, which we hadn't adopted yet, but we put forward a model regulation to give town meeting an idea of what we were thinking and where our, where our head was at but we wanted to retain the ability to, to uh, make changes if necessary. And it feels more flexible to me. I, um, I, I like that idea quite a lot. 
Um, Dan. So I like that in principle, but I think that in this case, we've already got it relatively as slim as we can get it. Yeah. And so I don't know, I don't like, so it, with in particular the busker one, it had things like amplification and sound rules and, si and stuff like that. And this one just doesn't have that level of detail that yeah. is worthy of, of separating out. But I mean, if there's a way to cleave it that I don't see, I, I'd be in favor of it. I have a separate question, point. So um, Doug and Christian, uh, if I read, we've got a, we got a memo in our packet from Carol Kowalski from talking about the ARB's vote on, and the memo is dated March 4th. And it appears that the ARB has done, a, made a proposed vote, um, uh, which section B is amending our section 703 general regulations by meeting, adding item blah, 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 which is the same language as we're considering now. Mm -hmm. So is it your understanding that if the ARB, if, you know, if we move forward and the ARB move forward, we're gonna be putting the same language in both places, or is there something here that I'm missing? Um, essentially, this, uh, this, and I would ask that the, yeah. the representative from the ARB could address this as well. Um, essentially, the, my understanding at the, at the meeting was that, you know, that the portions that fall under the zoning bylaw specifically are under the ARB's jurisdiction, and the portions that fall under the general bylaws are going to be the, under the Board of Selectmen's review. Um, but there were points that came up at the meeting that they felt that they had concerns about the, the language that was going to be put forward before the Board of Selectmen. And so um, the ARB had asked to essentially, they basically made recommendations to the language that I had originally proposed <coughs> based on their discussions last week, if I'm answering your question appropriately. Yeah, I'm in trouble on this one, Steve. I don't know. <laughs> um, May I? Can you provide some insight yeah. to this? Yes, please. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Bruce good Fitzsimmons evening. with the Redevelopment Board. Uh, and Mr. Klein is absolutely right. Uh, this is a, uh, an interesting type of warrant article that changes both the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw. And we wanted to give all due respect and deference to your board uh, to do what you will with the, with the general bylaw. Uh, our vote is really only with adding the new definition of notices to the zoning bylaw and then accepting out notices uh, where it appears in, in the main part of the bylaw, the zoning bylaw. Um, in the course of our conversation with the proponent, uh, members of the board did have some uh, concerns about how uh, the notices would, uh, uh, section might be adopted. Um, and that was the reason for our concern about the size of the notice uh, and the length of time that it could stay up. And to Mr. Kuro's question, uh, I think part of a, the difficulty that we wrestled with is the different types of notices that are all in the same article. So to us, a lost pet notice, it makes sense that that could stay up for a considerable period of time. Mm -hmm. um, an event, uh, you certainly want to get the word out for what's going on with the Friends of Robbins Farm or Shakespeare in the Park or something like that. So again, a longer time period would seem appropriate. Uh, but a garage, garage sale, uh, two weeks, in my view, seemed excessive. Yeah. Um, and then with respect to the sign size, uh, again, I think it depends where you put it. Uh, I can't imagine putting a 10 square foot sign on a telephone pole without some elaborate system to rig it in place. But on, uh, you know, a, in another location, that might work. Thank you very so, much. Yes. Just to, just to sort of close out this particular issue, the ARB's recommendation with respect to an amendment of the town bylaw is just basically a recommendation. In other words, the ARB's vote with respect to what it has jurisdiction to vote on cannot be changed by this board, but this board could certainly change the parameters of the recommended vote with respect to the seven days or the six square feet versus 10 square feet. In the model that I prepared for you as just an example of the discussion that might take place here, um, I included the ARB's recommended language for the purpose of consistency with the understanding that Mr. Klein would advocate for his position. But the amendment to the town bylaws falls squarely under this uh, body's jurisdiction. And whether or not, um, and, and it doesn't really actually change whether or not we have a single vote or two votes. In other words, we can have a single vote where this body disagrees with the ARB's recommendation with respect to how big it should be and how long they should 
would, would should be up there. Um, the only thing that this body can't do is change the ARB's part of the vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so I definitely understand that we can't change the ARB's recommendation. But just walk me, hypothetically, let's say that we think it should be 14 days. We make a recommended vote that's 14 days. And so then under the same article, we have one recommendation from the Board of Selectmen to make change the general bylaws to be 14. I'm sorry. I've already, have I already run aground or am I? So what will be, while the um, Board of Select, while the ARB will, will, will generate their own report, um, what will end up happening, and it just will be a little bit, we'll just have to logistically figure it out with the, with the moderator, but while the recommendation will be their recommendation and your recommendation will be your recommendation, the actual vote itself that will be before a town meeting will be the part as basically <coughs> passed by the ARB with respect to the zoning and the part as passed by the Board of Selectmen with respect to the town bylaws. So but be we could easily, I can easily see where those two recommendations will be incompatible. And they, and they can be debated, but, but I guess I'm not seeing. So if, I, go ahead. if I'm the moderator, I look at this and I say, I can't put forward both things. They, you know, you have to reconcile them into a single, uh, yeah. I, can, may I um, take a shot? I, yeah, I think so. So <clears throat> if I'm understanding it right, the ARB's vote stops at Q. So section Q recommended. So if you're looking at the second page of um, Carol Kowalski's memo, Oh, okay. So the only thing they're actually taking a vote on offering to town meeting stops at Q. Okay. Because that's where their jurisdiction ends. And then it's the Board of Selectmen voting for everything below that mm -hmm. as a, an amendment to the town bylaws. So mm -hmm. the in, there can't be incompatibility, I think, in reverse to what you're saying, because what you vote on is what you vote on. The ARB may not agree on what you're voting on, but it is solely what you're putting forth as the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Adam, got it. And let me just say it again in a different way so that I sure. can, so uh, the ARB's recommendation is first to change the zoning bylaws in Q, and second is to change the general bylaws in J. And my confusion was that I thought that J was part of the zoning bylaws. Oh. That was my, yeah. where I was confused. Sure. All right, thank you, I so, apologize. Just to, just to wrap this up, I think the ARB is allowed to note their position if yep. you guys disagree, but when it's before the town moderator, even if there's that disagreement, the actual vote will be, as the ARB approved the ARB's piece and as the Board of Selectmen approved the Board of Selectmen's piece if this body chooses to move for favorable action. Thank you. Joe. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd, I would like to move that we, um, that we uh, proceed with favorable action on the proposal but with the construction as I've, as I've suggested and request that the Town Council for our consideration actually uh, segment the vote on the general uh, bylaws such that it, it has reference to regulations to be adopted by this board and that he also uh, prepare a um, uh, draft regulation which reflects what is here in, in the, the, uh, the, the proposed recommended vote um, for the signed bylaw, but, but do that in the form of regulation for this board to adopt. And that we then consider, um, you know, again, as we did, I believe we did last year with street performance, that we add that to our, should we adopt that? Should we vote to adopt that? That we add that as appendix material in our report that this is what we intend to use as our starting point when we um, consider implementing regulations. Is that clear? I know it's a I, long, I think you, you, know what I'm, you know where I'm going with this, right? I think, yep, yeah, so, I, and mind if I try to paraphrase? Please, so. <laughs> it just battles. So I think that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe's motion is that we, will um, support this warrant article and basically have it play out exactly how last year's article played out that you referenced. Correct, and that in the interests of giving town meeting the opportunity to see w what we're thinking, which is, which to my mind, what I'm thinking really reflects what's here. I mean, we may have some discussion on size mm. that we include a draft regulation that we'll use as a starting point if town meeting um, votes to give us the authority to, to adopt, adopt okay. that. Thank you. Okay. There's a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any further questions for Christian? No. Um, well, we're not, we're gonna get to you after Christian. I'm all set, thank you. Can I just, th I, I wanna make clear that there is a limitation on that. And the limitation is that those regulations are gonna have to be consistent with the with the zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. In other words, they cannot go further than the zoning bylaws will allow them to with respect to these notices. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And so what I would and what I would basically read Mr. Kira's motion as saying is basically if you're looking at J, that it would say uh, and are exempt from the provisions of this article of the town bylaws subject to the quote notices regulations of the board of selectmen or something to that, like that effect yeah. correct yeah, thank you i just have a quick question for council um so the the section in the zoning bylaw that basically kicks the notices out of zoning and puts it into the general bylaws says notices in compliance with title five article one of the town bylaws are allowed in any district do you see any issue with the change affecting that i think it'll be complicated and more ambiguous um I mean, just to be frank, I think it will be, you know, it will say, okay, notices are exempt, go to see the town bylaws, and the town bylaws will say, you know, um, notices are what we're defining notices to be in these further regulations. So I, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to, I'd have to think about it a little bit, but I, I don't want to say that it's, I don't think there's anything per se uh, fatal about it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it, it will be basically saying that notices are what the Board of Selectmen say notices are, and mm -hmm. that makes it a little bit more uh, difficult to read their compatibility. Uh, um, with Doug, I think that you're misinterpreting this. Joe? I, I'm, I'm actually not suggesting that, that notices are what the Board of Selectmen says. I'm suggesting that the definition of notices be included in the bylaw, but the implementation and specifics around the, their regulation be, be adopted by this board as regulation and I would presume we would include that in our policy handbook as well once once we adopted that well, certainly within the zoning bylaw there will be a definition of oh, what a zoning notice bylaw. is okay. gotcha yeah. so there okay will, yeah. yes yeah. I think just as an example sure. just for further clarification and is I let's make sure we're all saying the same thing exactly. is that things like talking about the what materials talking about what happens about when they're lost or damaged that would be the type of thing that would be in a regulation not a bylaw what might be in the bylaw, and Joe, correct me if you're looking, is the size, or you even? I, no? I wasn't anticipating I wasn't that. that no. Okay, so then, <clears throat> okay. Anything that has a variable. This how you all set down, or? And so the definition would be, so what are the parts then that you, can you give me an example of what the part, the elements that you think would be in the definition in the bylaws? Everything before the enumerated list. Okay. Uh, unless there would be a requirement to include in the bylaw um, the specification that other town, other town okay. departments, uh, th that might have to be in the bylaw too, just, just specifying other de town okay. departments of jurisdiction. To, to accommodate the yep. recreation department and whatnot. You good? No, I'm ready to kill myself, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> both, both, both ways on it, so. But I, I, th I think I agree with Joe's amendment. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. You're welcome. Thank you. Next president, sir. I'm Tony Vogel, and I am so happy to be here. Thank you, Tony. Um, I, I'm an architect just, and graphic um, designer. So. I'm sorry, just a reminder, we um, do have a five minute time limit, yep. so I'm sorry, thank you. So let me get to it. I'm, I'm a graphic designer and architect and I've been involved in creating uh, as a volunteer since uh, my 18 year old was you know, kindergarten, involved in various school, park, community groups. I get drafted to do some design and do some publicity. So I'm very familiar with someone who's been making these and my expertise has been asked about it. And I, because my visual person, I think it's also helpful to have some context. I got a, some examples. Sounds good. This, this from the context, um, sort of how this first one here is sort of, yep. where we found ourselves in sort of a scoffle opposition. Thank you. The irony around the 4th of July, which we take a lot of pride in around here and Thank as you. does Boston. And Thank you. You're noting the verse that you can And then the other one I have is just some other examples. So that was drafted when we were sort of first faced with the idea that, oh my gosh, what we've been doing all these years you know, seems to be working, it seems to be a good idea, just isn't allowed.
Thank you. And then, Chris, do you mind helping with the... So, um, so to put this in context, I, um, I am speaking as a, a member and a president of the Friends of Robbins Farm Park. And as I'm sure you're all familiar, we, we hold a lot of uh, events. We've had as many as 12 events um, during a calendar year. And we feel a great responsibility to make sure that those people are aware of those events. And uh, we've evolved over, the, over many years now some practices which seem to, to work and um, that have changed. Um, I would say that I do feel that you know, there is a distinction to be made between notice for a yard sale or lost pet and the advertising of a community or large event. Um, we've designed these signs over many years and evolved. Um, we've gone from typically creating signs this size, or well, this small, which is actually, I made it just so you can see what um, two foot by three foot is. This is a six foot square sign. And this is fine if you're kind of close by, have a chance to read it. But we have found that um, after experimenting, we have signs of all different nature. Do you want to? Sorry, that's right. Okay. Oh, excuse me. And then we, find we have other signs of different sizes or different places where we ask permission of businesses to put them in their window or have smaller ones to supplement the larger signs. We do feel like the large signs. Um, we've kind of uh, evolved to. Now, that is in fact about a little over 10 square feet, just for context. And in the photo you have there um, on this page with four photos, you can sort of see one <coughs> um, mounted on the pole. And if you've seen our signs, the big ones, that's what they are. And what we found is for in order for people to actually sort of, sort of get the gist of what's going on, as they're driving by in their car, it needs to be of a certain size. Um, and we don't, I think it's a matter of, of both publicity and also public safety. Um, we have uh, also been, um, our expertise has been asked as we've evolved our practice, we've tried very hard to be environmentally responsible. We used to make new signs each year, try to pass them up, and we've now invested um, in creating signs that are reused each year in which we just change the appropriate information, such as the date on the bottom strip. Um, we have evolved practice of putting up each of these signs with simple three screws and a washer. We put them up. We found the ideal amount of time for a, a large event, somewhere between seven, 10 days and two weeks, depending on the scale of the event. Two weeks for something like the 4th of July, which is our largest public event. Maybe seven to 10 for one of our free music concerts. Um, and we put these in just uh, with screws and a washer, and they go right in, they come right out, very little of any damage to the pool. I have seen um, lots of practices where you know people are putting up eight and a half by 11 signs with like 16 half inch thick staple guns. I mean, people just go wild. And I can see there would be a concern on Verizon's part is most of those telephone poles are practically 90% metal. I mean, they're just abused. And I do think it's, it's, we recommend always when we're talking to other organizations who ask us, do it removable, make it simple. Don't put up too much hardware. I'm sorry, Tony, uh, can you uh, get into your concluding remarks, please? Yeah. So um, you see here, we've, we think that we have never had any complaints about our signs. In fact, we've been complimented, complimented sometimes to the point our signs have been stolen because they like them so much, but that's <laughs> another story. But we do feel actually that they're a benefit to the community and, and an important element to the community. I also want to just put in context, you know, why something needs to be big in a certain context in the second exhibit. Um, we don't want to preclude, I know they're not all the same category, but in context, you know, putting up a banner on a high school, the sign that's right out front here for the trivia B, they have to be big of a certain size. And we have an occasional, we'd like to have an opportunity 
for the occasional time uh, to have an appropriate sort of fundraising sign, which might go beyond this, you know, 10 foot size that we feel is very appropriate. You see the example here of our uh, save the slide for the park at Robbins Farm Park, which was a four foot by eight, so it's kind of thermometer style thing. It needed to be up there for quite a, quite a long time when we successfully uh, raised $30,000 in a matter of a few months because it was effective uh, advertising for a public good. And the money, of course, was donated to the town. So um, you, that's our background. And I'd say we're really appreciative. We really want to do things the right way. We don't want to just, you know, put things up and say we're not going to worry about it unless someone takes it down. We want, we really Thank you very much. I'm process. sorry we have to move on. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions? Well, Tony, if I may. So you're asking, you want it to be 14 days, not the seven, and you'd like it to be 10 square feet. Am I right? Are you? Yeah. I mean, we, just to be, to be very um, mercenary about it, I guess, we've actually invested over the years about $2,500 in creating these signs. So it would be, from our point of view, extremely uh, disappointing to have to trash that. You know, it's money that we, we raise from as a nonprofit and we feel like this is appropriate kind of thing. We never had anyone complain about it, but now we find that, you know, we appreciate the whole process that the ARB has gone through. My purpose in doing this is to actually show you what it is and actually show you what you've been seeing so that the 10 foot size doesn't seem like a gargantuan kind of thing, but something you've actually seen. If you see the signs at the corner, say, of uh, Highland and Gray, for example, those are, you know, sort of the key spots where you have those signs, and I don't think they seem overscaled in any way. Thank you. Further questions for phone? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Discussion from the board before our next presenter? Oh, my yeah. only question. I just, I only have one, one question. Did you design these? Yeah. They're beautiful. Really? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Ro uh, Raleigh Chapman, uh, and a member of the Fr Friends of Robbins Farm. So I did not really get involved with, with the committee that worked up this project, but I, I have a story that I want to tell you, and I want to emphasize the business about a sandwich board, because it's not listed on here, and I think it's key. Um, we got word of the difficulties in putting up signs last summer, and so we, we, we simply did not put up the bigger sign, poster signs that we had, and we had about a dozen. They went to special places around town, places where we knew people would see them. One of those was a sandwich board. It was a half a sandwich board. And the reason it was half was because it was installed in the island between the two sections of Mass Ave, almost across from the library, and it was facing west. So the people who were coming down east, if they get the light, they could have enough time to read it. If they were coming the other way, it would have been dangerous. So we just made it a half a signboard, sandwich board. Now to make sure that we kept this configuration, we probably have been putting out the big posters maybe 10 years now. And we used a little common sense here. We typically put them out about two weeks in advance of the event, July 4th. And we always took them down the day after the event. A lot of events were on Saturday. It was easy for me to come down after church and just pick them up and bring it home. Therefore, we never really, as Tony said, we never really got a lot of complaints about our signs. I won't speak for other people's signs, but our signs, we try to use a little common sense here and be good neighbors. And so that's why we did it that way. So my, my inference here is yes, the larger signs, the ones that he's talking about here, as opposed to what ARB had suggested, make sense because they're easier to read. We're not so concerned about the little poster signs, the eight by half by 11, unless you're walking by, you're not gonna see them anyway. So we haven't, we've done these and we've done the same thing. We've made sure that they come down shortly after the event but it's much more difficult to make that happen, as opposed to 
the dozen large signs where everybody has one or two that they're assigned to take care of. That's how I know about the sandwich board because that was my job. And I can put the thing in the back of my station wagon. Okay, so I would hope that as you're thinking about this legislation, that you in fact include somewhere the verbiage that talks about sandwich boards, even though it's not registered here. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yes, question. Yes, sorry, Rolly, Rolly. Why, give me, why coming east is it more dangerous than reading going west? What, what was that? Oh, okay. Let me understand that. Imagine, imagine the, the concrete light pole that's down there almost to the very end of the intersection. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, we put the sandwich board so it's facing west. Right. Which means people driving this way are going to see it, right? Okay. Now, the only people that are really going to see it are those that can stop for the light. Okay. Maybe a half a dozen. That's probably it. But, you know, if you leave the sign there long enough, that's going to count a number of people. Right, right. If the light changes and you're coming this way, and you're going to go west on Mass Ave, you're not worried about that sign. You can hardly see it anyway. So we just didn't even bother. We just made the sign a one-way sign. Am I making sense? Mm. I'm going to have to check it when I drive home tonight. <laughs> yes, do that. Yeah. Do that. You, okay. You'll notice. All right. You know, particularly if you have to take a left onto... Uh, is it Mystic Street? Yes, I, I live the there. The light so, there. Yeah, right. I go left okay. there all the time. Right. If you're two or three cars back from that light, that's where that sign is. You can't miss it. Mm -hmm. You can't miss it. Thank you. I know. I think that under the current um, <coughs> sandwich boards are included, was my interpretation, because as long as they oh, fit I didn't, into well, the I signage. Didn't they weren't here. That's the only reason I brought that up. Well, thank you. But I think uh, it just comes down to the size. Okay, thank you. Would you like to say something? Yeah, I, I, uh, I did want to make one more brief comment. There was some discussion about the idea of what seemed like kind of a permitting process, for example, a refundable fee. And I just want to suggest that I think that would be kind of burdensome, burdensome and furthermore, kind of an administrative nightmare hmm. with a number of signs, uh, notices. Thank you, know, you. Do we really want people coming in to get, and, and will they come in to put up their lost pet? Thank you. I do feel like the language that's been shown where you have to indicate who the sign is, a contact number, uh, and if it's not on there, then the sign is not allowed. It, it, you can take it down freely, but it, it needs to be there, and then you can clearly find someone or a group um, with that uh, notice there. Thank you. Uh, I guess, um, and I, I, it's tough because I know that the Friends of Robins Farm have a good track record on this, but I think that we, um, we really, we're, this isn't based at um, perhaps your group, it's based at the other groups that probably don't um, pay such close attention to the regulations that we have in town. So that's, um, that's where I came from um, with that idea. Um, and uh, I think that we did hear a lot of good um, Recommendations tonight. I thought that was a pretty good discussion, um, and I think that Joe's motion will allow us to digest everything that we heard tonight. I think that we um, doing it how we approached um, busking last year will allow us to kind of evaluate all of um, the recommendations that we heard and let us, um, you know. Uh, set the right path that we think is appropriate with the input of um, you know all these groups um, and you know when when it comes down to the size I, I think I agree with the chair of the ARB in that it does it does matter where it is and to me it does matter what it's for um, I think that you know discretion is needed when making um, decisions like this and I and I agree with the chair of the ARB when he spoke about the length, um, you know, different events warrant, um, you know, different lengths of time up. And I think that that's something we need to um, work out. And I don't know if that's something that can be worked out between now and town meeting. And I think that uh, taking some time to um, put it together is, uh, is appropriate. And that's why I'll be supporting Joe's motion. Uh, Adam, do you have some? <coughs> Before the board uh, finalizes the deliberation, I do think it's important to say, and this is in follow-up to something Mr. Dunn said earlier, by no means am I saying this to discourage uh, 
the proponents article. I think it's a good idea, and I think the it would be wise to move forward. But there should be no assumption or uh, thought that there would be resources available for active enforcement of this bylaw. I think it's important. I know I'll be asked on town meeting floor, so I think it's mm. important to make that clear to the board before taking Plain any action. Plain-based. Mm. Plain-based, yes. Thank you very much. But even some, assume, assume yes, something sure. like, you know, uh, <clears throat> must be made of resilient materials. How many times do we see a missing dog that's on a piece of paper that's been scotch taped to it? You know, I don't think they consider that a resilient material. You know? Not so. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Further discussion from the board, Mr. Dunn. Uh, two thought. Just, I am uh, very much in favor of this, in, in particular because it's going to not because it's going to keep lost pet signs from appearing and, and not being cleaned up. That problem will continue, no matter what we pass. But because it does permit a path forward for the things we do want, I think is uh, really, and so I'm very happy. And in particular, listening to the added speakers made me really come around. Joe, to your motion, I think you you got it right, and I'm happy to support it. Thank you. And we've got to allow Tony's stuff to be seen around town because it's really good. <laughs> well, um, so Mr. Chairman, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, if I, do you have enough? If I, under <laughs> I to ask you that, <laughs> if I understand the uh, uh, the the vice chair's motion correctly, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, draft. A vote that basically uh, provides for the first piece of um, the vote as proposed by Mr. Klein. With the board's permission, then I'll um, draft some basic regulations that address as many points as have been discussed today, uh, ranging from uh, some of the issues Mr. Dunn, Dunn raised to some of the other issues that have been raised. And if the board has no objection, I'd like to be able to consult with Mr. Klein and the secretary uh, ex officio of the uh, ARB to try to make sure that the spirit of this is consistent with the ARB's understanding as well as Mr. Klein's understanding as the proponent of the article and that these regulations uh, reflect uh, a fair balance of, of, of their concerns and obviously the points the board has made uh, this evening. Is that an acceptable course? I, I think that's fine with me, yes. And, um, if the chair of the ARB would like to have a say in it, I'd be happy with that as well. Um, in the discussion between now and the recommendation being written. This is a point of record. I'm not the chair, though, but I would be glad to consult. Oh, I thought you were. I'm sorry. Chair. You were last year. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> I keep saying chair. Uh, no offense. Um, Just clar clarification. All of this is, is uh, Predicated on we're recommending favorable action. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. So we have a motion and um, and a great discussion. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. There we go. Thank you, everyone. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, I generally don't do this, but is anyone here to speak on the disposition of real estate for 1207 Mass Ave? I didn't think so. So we're going to go to the master plan endorsement resolution, and we'll. It's. Well, am I in? The, this is just for us to put a placeholder in there. What what this is 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 for you to take favorable action to ask town meeting to give the board of selectmen authority to uh, dispose of the uh, former DAV property. But, but I, we don't have to. I mean, we're just it's giving us authority. Okay. And, yeah, sorry, so yeah. I didn't, I thought it was just a straightforward thing. No, well, um, we're, there's a bunch of people for the master plan, so I'm just going to take yeah, it yeah, out of order. You. Okay. Okay. Um, resolution for the master plan endorsement. Um, who wants to speak on this? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Carol Kowalski, I'm Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, the uh, Article 46 is a redevelopment board article asking town meeting to endorse the recently adopted Arlington Master Plan. Uh, the resolution uh, we offer is, is prepared in draft form. I think it, it's before you in your packets. And uh, it's redevelopment board, it's non-zoning obviously, but it is a redevelopment board inserted article. And uh, Bruce Fitzsimmons from the redevelopment board is here for any questions about the board's position on it or action on it. And 
co-chairs of the Master Plan Advisory Committee, Carol Svensson and Charlie Koloskis, are here as well. Uh, the purpose of the resolution, really, is to get town meeting to embrace the process that's ahead. The master plan has been adopted, so it's not to adopt the master plan because that's been accomplished. But this is, we're going to need to really partner with town, me town meeting going forward in order to implement the master plan. So this is, we want them to be familiar with it, to embrace the public process that's ahead and look forward to seeing items come before them repeatedly over the next several years as the master plan is implemented. Um, we have some information sessions, uh, four information sessions for town meeting members to help them get acquainted with the plan, but also to get them familiar with what they're being asked to commit to in this resolution uh, and what we're not asking them to commit to. Uh, it's been a long process and a lot of town meeting members have been involved, but some may not have been able to be as involved in the master plan process. So uh, March 10th, tomorrow, is the first of these four information sessions. Uh, the first one is at the Dallin School. Uh, the second is at the Stratton on March 18th. We have one at the Thompson School on March 26th. And April 7th will be at the Central School. So this is a way for town meeting members to really hear about the plan and the resolution. What time are those, Carol? They're all at 7 p.m. All at 7. Thank you for asking. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else want to say a few words? Hmm. Thank you. Bruce Fitzsimmons again with the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board. Not the um, chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Not the chairman. Thank you. Uh, so just to build on what Carol said, uh, the resolution is asking town meeting uh, essentially to endorse the act of the redevelopment board in adopting the plan. Uh, under Massachusetts law, it's the planning board that adopts a master plan, uh, and that's already happened uh, with the board. Uh, but we very much are interested in having uh, town meeting buy into this process. Uh, this is, has been a very public process over the last two years uh, with a number of different community meetings to try to uh, get the town's input into uh, the citizens' input into the, the master plan. And it's going to be an ongoing process. Uh, the master plan is a living document, and it can be revised over time as uh, matters warrant. And from the master plan itself, Undoubtedly, there will be specific warrant articles that come to town meeting over the next few years that try to implement specific actions of the master plan. Um, I guess what I would uh, want everyone to understand is we're not asking town meeting necessarily to endorse every single recommendation that's in the master plan, but more buying into this process and the idea that there will be warrant articles coming forward uh, as time goes by. Um, and lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the people who have been involved in this process, uh, the members of the Master Planning Advisory Committee, uh, our planning staff, uh, our consultant, Mr. Curro, for being the liaison from your board to the MPAC, um, and Mr. Byrne as well. Uh, so, uh, again, thank you very much. It's been a, a, quite a process. Thank you. Hello, Carol Swenson, Master Plan Advisory Committee co-chair. I can't really follow up too much on what Bruce said. He kind of stole my thunder. But just to reiterate, we met with community leaders, people, you know, just regular people, um, committee members. We started this process in October of 2012, and since then there's been about 75 public workshops, presentations, meetings, interviews, and surveys. We've tried to, well, I think we have incorporated most, if not all, of the comments of the public and made a balance of what everybody wants and needs into something that I think would be a good plan for the future. And we hope that the town meeting will agree to endorse the ARB's action. Thank you. Just to, uh, my name's Charlie Kalowskis, also co-chair with the Master Plan Advisory Committee. I just want to echo what the previous uh, people have said. And also want to thank the 11-person um, 
Master Plan Advisory Committee. We met on a monthly basis, uh, did a lot of work between meetings as well. And just say that the master plan really is a policy statement and a framework for future physical development in town. It's consistent with the town goals that were adopted in 1993. Um, and I think it's going to help the town in terms of making investments in the town's physical uh, development over the next 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. So I just want to thank everybody that uh, supported the effort in this and uh, looking forward to town meeting. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, yeah, of course, I'd like to thank um, everyone for all their work on this, uh, the committee members, planning staff. Um, the ARB made an excellent vote um, in their um, endorsement of this. Um, and I would, I think it's really important that everyone knows that this isn't required. Um, that I think this is uh, adding another level of transparency to an incredibly transparent process. And I, I think that will only, you know, serve the community better. Um, I, I've been quite impressed by how this has played out. And um, yeah, I'm happy to support this. And I, I think that it is important to note um, what Carol said in that. It's not asking for, you know, the town meeting's support on every issue moving forward. It's basically just, you know, plan for it, be ready for it, and know that there are really important warrant articles that are going to be coming down the pipeline. And um, I, I'm very happy with this. Um, so, Joe. Thank you very much, Mr. Byrne. I, first, I want to thank you, and I want to thank the other members of the board, because I know that you had served as a sports liaison uh, for the first um, part of this long process that we've been through and uh, I've been happy to have the opportunity over the last year and a half or so to, to fill your shoes in that um, and get to know the members. I, I'd, I'd note that Ms. Richter, he, who is here uh, with us this evening, is also a member of the advisory uh, committee. Um, there were a lot, as much as there was discussion about public input and there was, even up to the last moment, even after the uh, Master Plan Advisory Committee had drafted final recommendations to the ARB, even some of the late coming public commentary was incorporated in the in the uh, redevelopment board's discussions and there were some tweaks that were even made at, at that that time and uh, one thing I want to note is that it was it felt that it was very important to um, underline that this would be a living document and this is kind of a kind of a road map for us to, to um, live by at the um, advisory committee there was long discussion about what the proper way was to go forward uh, to town meeting because all along there has been a commitment we will come back to town meeting there have been forums throughout this process that have been specifically directed towards town meeting members with a, with a lot of participation but there was a little bit of a quandary because under the law the redevelopment board is the authority and, and adopts adopts this um, I think this is the right way to go um, with this resolution um, if you look, I, I lost count. I, I think it's 65 or, or 70 separate recommendations. It's something like eight pages at the end of the master plan now of steps that will be taken in the future. I, I say steps because each one of those, you know, 70 recommendations includes its own public process. So we've had 75 meetings and surveys and interviews and such up until now, but there's so much more public process ahead some of it will be with town meeting. Some of it will be with this board. Some of it will be with the redevelopment board. All of the, um, uh, the, the parties that are expected to participate are enumerated in, in that recommendation section. That in and of itself is, is gold as far as I'm concerned, as far as really giving a um, um, kind of a view forward as to what we can expect in future years. So I think it's appropriate, and, and I'm going to enthusiastically uh, su support um, this that we um, go forward and ask town meeting to engage further as we go go down the road. Al already, the, there were some preliminary discussions. I know at the last advisory committee meeting about, um, <clears throat> you know, how do we want the implementation process to look? Do we want some kind of an implementation committee that will that will be there to kind of help r remind you know boards and committees and, and such, you know, kind of like a project project management really to to remind folks of the various steps that have been laid out um, in this seven-year plan. So I'm very enthusiastic, um, and um, if it's appropriate, I'd like to, to move favorable action on the uh, recommended uh, resolution language. Certainly is. Thank you. 
further discussion from the board. Dan? I just want to say I liked the mailing I got. I thought it was good the, as a town meeting member. And I think that that's um, part of the communication that's so important that I know that we've talked about a lot, and I was really glad to see that. You inspired it, as you recall. <laughs> <laughs> My fingerprints weren't on it. I don't know. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so just thank you for tremendous work. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Um, further discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, Article 13, Disposition of Real Estate, 1207 Massachusetts Avenue. Doug, do you want to lead this? Absolutely. Sorry, let me just pull up my notes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, take your time. I know there's quite a few of them. So um, as, as the board will recall, this has been a, a long process for the board. The board's engaged um, the community extensively. Uh, it's had a number of discussions and taken a number of steps already uh, with respect to the posture of a property that is specifically uh, held by the board. It's not held by the town. It's not held by the ARB. It's specifically held by the Board of Selectmen. And um, pursuant to the town's uh, the, the board, this board's robust uh, sort of exploration with the town manager about what the best use of this property uh, uh, is now that we know that it's ours. Uh, the board basically elected that that uh, in the long run, sale was the most appropriate um, was the most appropriate uh, long-term course for the property. In order to achieve the sale of real estate, uh, the board needs to obtain the permission of town meeting. Uh, town meeting can set uh, forth some parameters for the sale. Um, but it doesn't have to. So basically, all we're doing is, is asking uh, for town meeting's permission to sell the property and should attach as little conditions on it on, in, our, in the board's vote as possible so as to give the board as much flexibility as possible in determining what the price is going to be, what it's going to be used for. As the board uh, will recall, the, it's important to keep the price confidential so that once we go out to an RFP process to sell the property, which is required by state law under Chapter 30B, um, will have some, hopefully, some competition and uh, secure the best price, even if we're ultimately electing to sell it for some quote-unquote public purpose. So uh, as you'll see in the memo, there's, it's, it's basically fairly straightforward. This is the first step of the process. Uh, there's not actually a clear limit in terms of the time that town meeting is going to authorize you to make a sale. Um, the board will also recall that there are some plans for what to do with the property in the meantime. Um, and I'm happy to discuss that further, but, it, it, but uh, unless the board has any quest further questions, I think this is really just, uh, as you've done with other properties in the past, uh, a vote to ask town meeting for uh, permission to sell the property. Excellent. Thank you. I, and I will um, note that we've had, this has been a part of, or I guess this was, there have been several discussions leading up to this um, with this board, and I think um, we've all stated our, or I think that I've expressed my opinions on um, this act um, at that time, so I won't dive into it now, but um, discussion. Move favorable action. Second. A motion is second. Um, further discussion? Dan. I just think it's important that our comment include some of the history <coughs> in terms of the hearings we did, the and all that stuff. Absolutely. I agree. Thank you. Yes, Kevin. And, and I was, didn't we uh, kind of come down on the side of renting this for a year should that be included in the comment or i think they're going to want some hmm. specifics that is appropriate yeah. yes that's mr Greeley. i'll put that in the comments well yeah i am um, i 100 percent agree with mr Greeley on that mm, thank you um further discussion nope um we have a motion and a second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed there you go okay. Warrant article hearing number two in the books. <laughs> um, four final votes and comments. Um, I think that we should address each article individually. So um, we'll start at the top. And if you have um, any comments, um, please share them with us at that time. Um, now, one second. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I apologize. I know we've, we, this has been a longer meeting, but I, did, uh, I do feel it's appropriate to note with respect to Article 8, 
um, limiting speaking time and announcements and reports. Um, while I prepared what I think uh, it reflects the board's uh, discussion overall um, and the full sort of depth of the types of matters that the board and its proponent contemplated, I do want to note that the uh, town moderator uh, communicated with me that he felt that there was there was an alternative in the way in which it could be presented, which would be to basically instead of uh, write it out as specifically as this, to basically say that all matters uh, under Article Three of the warrant, which is basically reports of committees, would be subject to this time limit. It's my understanding that this board had a broader um, category of things that it wanted to include, but I just wanted to. Uh, present that the town moderator had uh, said that an alternative in his mind was to say all matters under Article 3 and I think uh, announcements. Uh, I think this is probably a little bit more specific than that. Thank you, Doug. Um, okay, any, yes, Joe. Thank you. Um, I think I'm concerned with that even though we always have Article 3 devoted to that, theoretically it doesn't have to be that way. I, I, I know we always, I know. It, you could refer to it simply as um, reports of committees. It doesn't have to have the number. True, true, and true, true. Um, so I don't, I don't feel strongly one way or another. There, there is one concern I do have in the language here. I, I, I think um, we may have an unintended consequence. It's very small, um, but I noticed that in the last highlighted paragraph, no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor. It says, no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor but the first time on any non-actionable subject for more than four minutes, et cetera, et cetera. And then it says, no, later on, it says, no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor for a second time on any subject for more than five minutes. I don't think that was our intent. I think our intent was any time for the non-actionable items, it would be um, a four-minute limit. And it seems we have an unintended consequence there by including the word first. So, uh, Mr. Kerr, I think my recollection was that there was a discussion with Mr. Schlickman about this general issue in terms of inserting the bylaw so that folks, so that it would basically just be inserted and the rest of the bylaw would remain the same, which is why I constructed it this way. If you're concerned about that, I can certainly modify it for the purposes of uh, saying that non actual items won't be rec cannot be recognized for a second time, or I could modify. Um, the clause that says no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor for a second time to include non-actual items. Yeah. I, I am only suggesting that we remove the word first from, from that uh, last paragraph, uh, highlighted paragraph, such that it says no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor. I, I'm sorry, not for the first time. Strike for the first time. So there's no person shall speak or otherwise hold the floor on any non-actionable subject for more than four minutes. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Just striking those, the comma and the one, two, three, four words. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 8? Yes, Dan. Uh, do you think it would be a little more uh, readable if we include a uh, mention that the highlighted is what's being inserted? That is I the, think it does. Uh, does it actually say that? I thought. It says it at the beginning of the memo, but I can. Oh, it said it at the beginning of. Okay. So when your vote goes into uh, your uh, votes and comments, uh, the final version, it won't be highlighted. It'll just be this is the recommended vote unless you'd like it to be that way. So I think it's, imp I think it's important that town meeting ask, or a town meeting will want to know what the change is that they're making. And so I guess, uh, I th yeah, somehow we have to tell them, we, we have to tell them that. <laughs> Sure. I mean, I, 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 we've, we've done it in the past in a couple of different ways. Okay. And, I, and if this way works for the Board of Selectmen, I'm happy to put it into the report this way, or I can, you know, <clears throat> there's a couple of different ways it can be done. I'll make sure it's clean. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't have a preference as to what way. I just. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Yeah. Uh, it, it's related to this, but all articles. So tonight, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Mahan uh, can't be here. So when it's reported, what we're about to do, it's going to be reported that it's a four to one vote. Oh. Four to zero. Four to zero. I, yeah, I believe. You sure? It's like, because yeah. it would be like four zero one or something like that. No, we even just say four zero. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. one. Oh, and then Mr. Mahan's absence. Yeah. 
I think it'll say 4-0, Ms. Mahan, absent. Is there a way that she could vote on it, though, so that it could be a 5-0? In other words, I, hear, I thought, I thought we, we showed it as a 4-1. Sorry. Okay. So, so uh, if, if that's a Well, I, I mean, I know for me what's happened other years is uh, I missed a night when there was like eight final votes. And so it looked like I didn't take part in any of those final votes, which I didn't because I wasn't here for the night we voted on the wording like we're doing on these articles tonight. But certainly I've been there for the hearings part of it or, you know, uh, along the way. So I, I, no, leave it alone. Never mind. Sorry. And my answer, if we want to resolve it that way, we should, if, if Mrs. Mahan wants or to be recorded, then she should ask a chair to bring it back and we yeah. just vote on it again. But that, we'd have to do that by Robert's so, yeah. rules. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Further discussion on Article 8? Move approval. Second. Great. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Article 8, all set. Article 9, Bylaw Amendment, Human Rights Commission. Discussion. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Article 10, bylaw amendment, description of the Mount Goboa Crescent Hill District. Move approval. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Article 11. Mr. Chairman, with, with your and the board's uh, patience, I'd like to move that we uh, uh, table that until the uh, 20, our next meeting, March 23rd. Uh, it is my intention to put together a substitute article to be put before uh, town meeting, uh, but I'd like to make a, a plea to one more plea to my board before we actually change this wording. So, uh, with the board's permission, I'd like to uh, move to table to the 23rd. I'll second that. Your motion is second. Discussion. I, I'm happy to table it. I'm happy to entertain. Is there? Is it worth us having a brief conversation about ideas first now, or would you rather just? Well, I also wanted the full board here, but. Um, I, I, I'm just going to I'm going to uh, try and convince you again what I what I felt I had two of you so close. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 my motion is going to be to reconsider and to change that it would be one selectman working with the town manager who would do the search and rescue and interview, and those two bring before this board. And this board with the town manager, as we do with CDBG, would actually make the appointments. But I do feel strong enough. I'd rather not have to go to town meeting. Uh, but I really do believe it's very important that the selectmen um, have more of a say in this. The, um, uh, I think this takes coordination um, on this board. Uh, uh, you know, the examples I gave before, if. Uh, you know, if, if uh, the Community Preservation Act is, needs money for one of their projects and they don't have any <coughs> funding, Excuse I could see where they would come to us and maybe ask for funds out of CDBG or through the general budget or through capital planning. I just think it takes, it's great to have uh, something like this where these new projects are going to be recommended. What about tying it into what we just heard on the master plan? So I just feel very strongly we need a stronger role in these appointments. Thank you. Um, I, thank you, Mr. Greeley. Um, I think we have a second. But I will note that um, one thing I think we should consider if we are, um, if we're going to reconsider um, the board's role in this, I think we should also um, consider extending the date from 30 days back to 45 days, because I think those two are intertwined. And um, I think that's um, part of the discussion. I. <clears throat> um, I think that we should have um, when that time comes. Joe. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, as I think I was the person in the unenviable position of being the swing vote uh, the last time. Um, I'm a Lieber. I felt like a teetering scale. And, um, you know, I've given it a lot of thought, and I, I think that it is worth um, another discussion. This is really quite quite different. The more I've thought about it since since our last time, and... Um, I, I think it's worth worth having a discussion with the entire board uh, present as well. So um, I, I'm happy to support the motion to table. And, and, uh, okay. Further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And you said that's the 23rd meeting, Kevin? Uh, next meeting, yes, please. Okay. If that's all right with you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, I'll have to consider it, I guess. <laughs> um, moving on, Article 16, uh, acceptance of legislation, complete streets program. Dan. Uh, I, I think we should take, I, I want to take another swing at uh, this one, I think, because in particular, uh, I'm concerned that it doesn't quite go far enough in terms of explaining what 90i does. So in particular, in particular so just so you know, I read this one, I've been really worried about this one in terms of the presentation because so many of our other, um, so many of our other articles, there's a lot of context and there's a lot of information that's provided to people. So for instance, the CPA, you know, they've heard about it, they voted on it, there's a lot of stuff that, but if you're a town meeting member and you know, I think back when, when I was first elected to town meeting, I'd get that selectman's report and I'd read it, and that was like where I was getting 90% of my information about what was going on. And I look at this one and I say, town meeting must adopt 90i, and I say, what happens when you adopt 90i? What are the requirements? What are the impacts for the town? And I think the only impact is that we have to adopt a complete streets plan. But we don't actually say that yet in this comment. So I just, I, I, I'm, and I sent it to a couple of my favorite uh, test town meeting members and I said, here's my draft, here's the draft language. Would you get it or would you have questions? And they both said, yeah, I'd have questions. And in particular, the questions were, um, and I apologize just because I did it this afternoon, but, and in fact, I got a text message this, uh, during the meeting saying, Dan, I don't understand. <laughs> so uh, I apologize for not having talked earlier with uh, town council about that. No, I, um I actually wrote down the same note okay. um, that when going through this, I think um, when one of the main parts of our last discussion when we were having it was, you know, we had to be very clear regarding what the exact process is to be eligible for funding. And I, I read through it and I didn't see that there. Um, so I agree that maybe um, clarifying that a bit is a important step. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Doug, what do you think? So, uh, I will definitely take another shot at it. Thank you um, very much. And I, I would maybe, uh, it would be an efficient use of time uh, for Dan and I to talk about what would be, um, what, what would he, would, what town meeting members would like to specifically see with the understanding that there is one uh, significant limitation and that's that Chapter 90i is a really new program, and the state hasn't promulgated regulations with, the, with respect to exactly what it will want to see from its perspective in any complete streets policy. So all it's really telling us right now is accept Chapter 90i, uh, develop a complete streets policy, either by bylaw or Board of Selectmen policy, or yeah, Board of Selectmen regulation. Um, and it's not giving us a lot more context for exactly what that will be. But if Dan and I have a conversation, and I can have a conversation with uh, Laura Weiner about what some of the sort of intel that they're getting on it, I think it would be helpful. And I'm happy to do it. I think that it would as well. Thank you very much. Dan, you happy? Yes, absolutely. Good. Um, so further discussion regarding Article 16. Um, seeing none. So do we vote on it? Um, just we'll table. table it and then table. We'll bring it back. Yeah. Gotcha. I move table. Second. Second. Table. Motion and second table. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, I assume everyone else meant to say aye. Then I did. Good. <laughs> I just thought it really loudly. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, really. If I may, you uh, may. Uh, in past town meetings, uh, each of us get a large three ring binder. Uh, and I think that's put together by all three of our offices. Or is it primarily yours, Adam, or ours, or is it, yeah? <laughs> are we doing that this year, or are we going to use these? I think you'd still do the binders. The binder? Yeah. I'm not sure that town meeting is going to be set up on this type of a system. No, I meant for us, just uh, I didn't mean for town meeting. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I think this really. I think she means put together the binders for town meeting. I think she means that uh, that uh, Novus isn't necessarily going to be set up for town meeting. Like, so we'll do the binders. Uh, can't right, hold the same the program. It doesn't transition over to town meeting, like the program. 
Yes. Okay, well, I was going to say I want the three of them bind already. Right <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. Right in the middle. You might not even get it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, what, it isn't set up. We're looking at it right here. This is the Warren article in our vote. What's mm -hmm. different with, what do you mean? It's not yeah, set up for John Because all we would could, have to do is <clears throat> doesn't run all the articles. You'd have there. to get, yeah, exactly. You'd have to get the moderator involved. You'd have to get all the town meeting members and so on and so forth. And we really, we, we've only no, done, no, no. yeah, we've only done the implementation for the Board of Selectors. Yes, and I, I think we still have some kinks that I yeah. think we need to work out. I figured out what I did wrong, by the way, that caused my problem. So was it, so was it Novus or was it you? Uh, it, a it's, a, it's, mixture a, of it's a feature within Novus that's not great, but I mean, and so you just, yeah. You know, I've been thinking about perhaps um, putting Novus on the agenda at a right. point in time and maybe discussing some issues yeah. about it. Um, just checking, but we'll save that for another day. Um, we will. We do have to uh, before we um, end the meeting. We do have to go back to the discussion of future BOS meetings. Do you want to do? Oh yeah, sure. Mr. Chairman. I, yes. I got a hockey score. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Final score: Arlington Catholic four, Arlington High School one. Congratulations to the Cougars. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Yes. <laughs> congratulations to Arlington High School as well. I'm, uh, I understand it's a very close game until the middle, about the middle of yeah, the third period. It was one one after two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, but um, I'm looking forward to supporting Arlington Catholic in the finals. And I hope uh, everyone will join me in doing so. Um, so going back, we have a discussion of future Board of Selectmen's meetings. Okay. So, um, starting in April, would we do the 13th and 27th? 27th is town meeting, right? Yep. So that's the first night it would have to be. And I mean, it's either, yes. Do we typically have an organization meeting the Monday after election? The sixth is already scheduled. Mm. No, the Monday after is the third. Yeah. yeah, so we have the 30th and the sixth already scheduled. The is that right? Is scheduled. Okay. Oh. So we have one scheduled on the sixth? Oh, no, sorry. Just the th sorry, the 30th we have. I have the yes. 30th, okay. okay. Yeah, sorry. So, want to do the sixth and the 27th? Work? No. No? If we're meeting on the 30th. Which is the week? Oh, so the 13th. Yeah, the 13th and the 27th, I think. Yes, I think that, uh, yes, I was okay. not thinking properly. And what time do you want to? I myself. <laughs> what time do you want to do for uh, the? 27th, we have to do 6 p.m., correct? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the first night of town meeting? Town meeting starts at 8, so. 7 p.m., right? 7. Mm -hmm. About 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, right. right. <laughs> when is Patriot's Day, the 13th? The 20th. Okay. <coughs> 7.15, 27.7. Um, going into May, the, hmm. Yeah, we have Memorial Day on the 25th. Yeah. And we presumably have town meeting going 4th, 11th, 18th. We might actually have to schedule 4, 11, and 18 because of town meeting, right? But should we just go at 4 and 18 for now? Or? 4 and 18 and keep 11 open just in case? Okay. And those would both be at 7 with town meeting? June. Um, Eight and twenty-two. Um, Bear with me just a minute. I'm still. No, this. I am going away in June. So are we ready to, to talk about June? Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Uh, I'm, I, we're going to be we're going to be keeping going. We're going to be scheduling July, right? No. We're not. Oh, we're just going to do June. June okay. Yeah. So eighth and twenty. Okay. Um, so if if so, did we say eight and twenty two? Mm-hmm. If that works for everybody. Yep. Yes, it does. I'm going. I'll be out of town though. So the fourteenth, but that works. Well, that was easy. Are we doing July and August or no? No, um, on the in the agenda, the schedule only goes to June. Okay. So we'll attack that at a later time. Um, okay, and then uh, co we correspondence received our response to changing <coughs> of flight patterns on runway 33L and Veterans Council seeking members. Thank you. I, I move receipt. Um, I would note that uh, I want to say that um, I think Mr. Uh, Ciano has been continually sharing material with both the chair and myself. Um, I, I did share with him this, this. He hadn't seen this letter from oh. uh, from um, the FAA, and um, I think that he has shared, uh, at least with with us. Uh, he's, I think he's been communicating through us. Um, a response that uh, it seems that a lot of communities got the same letter pretty much basically basically telling us to take a hike um, and uh, Belmont um, has sent them a response and they're obviously trying to rally support from other communities based on that model so we may want to put this back on the agenda again if, we, if we're going to consider further action yeah um, that, that's probably a good idea Did, do you remember when Belmont was Trying to get a support by? I don't remember. Um, I'll look into it and um, we'll perhaps try to get it on the next meeting if that's soon enough. And if not, we'll um, maybe try to consider a different action of our own. That works. And I, I think, and I know you, you know this, the, um, our legislative delegation is trying desperately to get the new CAC um, fixed so that we're on it. Mm. And some other communities that were left off of it are on it, so we should stay tuned. Yes, this is, um, it's funny, this wasn't an issue I was ever expecting um, coming through at first. Um, and it's uh, pretty intricate, and um, it's uh, definitely an important one for us to stay on top of, because yeah. it uh, there's a huge quality of life issue um, that this is, you know, really hampering and that's uh, like just not very cool. I, I was I was disappointed in the reply because it didn't follow the nuance of what we were suggesting. Yeah. It said, you know, it assumed that we'd made the dumb argument, and we really didn't. We were a lot more thoughtful, and they said, "Don't be dumb." Was, you know, really, please read what we said. Yeah. <laughs> very valid point. Thank you. Yeah, yeah frustrating. Um, so, there's a motion on the table. Um, was there a second? Second. second. Motion second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, new business, Marianne. Ah, no new business. Uh, one small personal matter. My wife is expecting on the 16th. Um, my plan is to be here uh, on the 23rd for the selectman's meeting, uh, unless she's still in labor at one time. <laughs> So, uh, but but if, if if that eventuality becomes a possibility, I, I will obviously, through the town manager, advise the, the board of how the situation to be handled, and either make Mr. Marlinga available or make some other arrangement to make sure that the votes and comments and all the things that are necessary keep on moving. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I have no new business. There we go, Kevin. Uh, I have uh, two pieces, Mr. Chairman. One is uh, the select tones have a gig this Saturday evening at the St. Camilla St. Patrick's Day celebration. Uh, and the other is I want to congratulate the Arlington High uh, quiz team. They again uh, participated this year in the high school quiz show, which is on Channel 2 Saturdays at 6 p.m. 160 
public and private high schools uh, competed this year, and Arlington High School made it to the round of 16. So uh, on Saturday night, uh, last Saturday night, they competed against Long Meadow, and I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer. Oh, and we won? And, and uh, thrilled to now say Arlington High School won. So on, on April 18th, they will be competing against the winner of the Newton North and the Chelmsford. But a tremendous achievement uh, and very well done on their part and we wish them the very best. And I want to especially thank, uh, I was made aware of all of this by uh, Catherine King, uh, who sent me a note saying she's sorry she's gonna miss the select tones this year. But anyhow, uh, good for them. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Dunn. It's been a long night and I can't restrain myself. So, when, unfortunately, I will not be able to join the select tones. I'll be in New York for business. And when, if you really want to impress them, you can remind them that it not only is 314 Pi Day, because it's 3.14, Super. but pie it is day. Super Pi Day. Because as we all know, Pi is 3.14159.5359, which means at nine, <laughs> Steve can't contain himself either, <laughs> which means on Super Pi Day at 9.24 in the morning, it is the whole, you know, the first 10 digits all in, in one. I will not be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, no new business, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that's very new business to me, actually. So. <laughs> I, I, but it, it is a, it is interesting. It's the first time I've heard it. It only works if you use the American format for dates. The Europeans think we're crazy. Right, because they put the month for us. Yeah. Right? Well, the day for us. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. My jaw is open. I work with computer programmers all day, and that's the geekiest thing I've heard all week. <laughs> thank you. My, my, uh, thank you for the plug. Because my work that, here is done. It is excellent. It is excellent work that the AEF is doing with. Um, uh, trying to raise money for the technology program at the, mm. the schools. Um, the only piece of business I had is uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to make it. I, I know the town manager told me about it. I, I think we all probably joined together in congratulating all of the police officers who were uh, recognized um, mm -hmm. last week at their uh, award ceremony and, and promotions. And I'm not even going to say anybody's name because there were a lot, including all the responders uh, after the <coughs> marathon tragedy. I know that the advocate uh, carried the, the most of the names, I think, uh, online and such. So I'm sure we all uh, congratulate them and, uh, and thank Very them for point. their service to the town. Thank you, Joe. Um, so uh, I guess I do have two pieces of new business that I wasn't planning on having. But th this is an important one. Um, the we were talking a lot about um, the hockey game tonight, but the Arlington High boys varsity basketball team had quite the season as well. And it's important to note that um, they lost in the playoffs up at the Songus Arena on Saturday to a uh, very good Danvers team. But um, definitely a note of congratulations to that as well. And it's um, r really great to see that um, you know. A lot of sports has to come through Arlington these days, and that's something I'm, I, um, I really like. So um, the other piece of new business is with um, our sister city relationship of Nagoka Kio. They have a new mayor, um, and um, Miss Mayor Kengo Nakakoji, I, and I'm sorry if I um, pronounced that wrong, but um, I think um, it's important that we reaffirm our, um, you know, the benefits of our sister city relationship. And um, we have a nice note from Mayor Nakakoji as well. And um, I know that he's a, or I've heard he's a big proponent of the student, student exchange program, which is re really the, where, you know, I think this program begins and ends with me because I think they get the most out of it. Um, and. That's a um, really cool thing, and I'm looking forward to supporting it and working with him moving forward. Um, so that being said, I have no new business. Um, Move we adjourn. Second. Your motion a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.